All righty, everybody. What is up? I am here with another day of Spyro goddamn freaking speed running. I'm trying not to curse too much in the first 10 seconds. If you're watching the VOD after the fact, type a number. I think we're on five. Type a number five uh, down in the comments below, as well as your favorite uh, domesticated animal. Mine has got to be cats, fat cats specifically. But yeah, let me go ahead and turn on the music here and we'll get into some practice. Welcome, everybody. And big shouts to the VOD watchers once again. I love you guys. All right, so um, where are we heading? Let's head over. Oop, I don't know where the fuck I just clicked there. We're going to Toasty, <laughs> a level we don't do in any percent. You know what I should try? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to warm up with a, just an unrelated level right now. I'm going to go just to Ice Cavern for some warm up. And then um, after that, I think I'm going to suck my own dick live on stream now after that i'm going to practice the early thief strat again that laura was sort of theorizing um i was pretty consistently under gemmed on my runs yesterday so it might be wise for me to go for the early thief for some extra gems at the cost of a few seconds so we'll see we shall see Part of me doesn't really want to because I just want to like maximize the pace with this route. It's like it's one of those things like you don't have to go for it. So it's like kind of like, eh. but we'll see. Hi, Bradley. Yeah, I'm having a good Friday. I have not sucked my dick on stream yet. You're here just in time. You didn't miss the, the juicy part. But anyway, I hope the uh, Spyro 2 has been going well, man. Hope you're not sucking any dicks on stream. What's up, Blue Eye? Blue Eye 1992 and Blue Eye Hawk, the double Blue Eyes. Blue Eyes White Dragon coming in my chat next. About to burn it. What's up, Joshy? Thank you for the good luck. I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna do like a little thing here. Crank up the sound a smidge. Right there. Yeah, I'm, I've been messing with the uh, mic settings a little bit. Uh, so I did turn up the mic a little bit today. And uh, I've decided to leave on the audio ducking for the game just to see if I prefer that. Just trying different things. I do feel like my voice was competing with the game a little bit yesterday, so... Just trying to, you know, even it out a little bit. Just have it be the most balanced audio ASMR, you know, sexual experience for you guys. Yeah, Dad Kula, the day has started very solidly for me. Um, I woke up at the crack of noon. I actually got to bed really late last night. Um, I don't know. I like I took an edible and I just I, when I laid down in bed, I like was like, OK, dude, I should go to sleep. But then I just ended up looking at my phone for like three hours. Like I, I, sh <laughs> I should have fallen asleep at like, you know, midnight. But I was up till like two, three in the morning just looking at God knows what on my phone. I don't even remember like videos of some shit. It got to the point where I was like, dude, I just got to go to bed, man. Like put this. I know I literally I remember I put my phone to my side that it fell off the bed. I was like, OK, good. <laughs> like, Good. Sleep. But I have been doing better about not looking at my phone so much in the morning. I still do check, like, my phone in the morning, but I don't, like... I haven't been, like, full-on degenning it. Uh, where am I going? Um, I guess let's head over to Town Square. Let's take a look at the uh, strat. Let's see if I want to do it or not. Um, R1. Still very much on the fence. I think, for me, it might be smart to incorporate this strat, but at the same time, I just... I just don't want to, <laughs> you know, I, it's just that simple. I don't, I don't like change. And it is slower, you know, it's like, theoretically speaking, this would be like the slower thing. But also theoretically speaking, you do get good gems per second. So in theory, you know, it could be faster, you know, that whole spiel. Or other levels but yeah just considering that I've been missing gems a good amount um, 
in my runs lately. It's just I might have to I might have to just bite the bullet and go for this early thief just to grab some extra gems here and in Magic Crafters. Oops. We'll work on that some more. I'll just set a safe state like right here. Reset that. Just run it a few times. Some good rat procs yesterday. Yeah, thank you, Joshy. I got two first try rats yesterday, which was very nice. How much time does the Dreamweaver's homeworld flop save? Uh, about four, four to five seconds. Anywhere from three to five seconds, depending on how your execution is. I dropped the, for getting that thief early here, um, I dropped the uh, second thief in the Magic Crafters homeworld to grab an additional five gems. On top of these extra gems right here. So it is like a rough, like, Laura timed just to this, just doing this to be like a three second time loss. I think it's a little more than that. In my experience, it's been closer to like a five second time loss to do this. Um, but then you save back, like, you know, maybe like a half second or something in the Magic Crafters homeworld. Or a second or whatever, so that's probably where she gets that number from. What's up, Composer? Thank you for the good lucks. Composer likes this strat. I'm still on the fence about it. I'm still trying to figure out whether I want to do it or not. What's up, Blazing Kitsune? I, I feel like I kind of have to go for it because, like, my... I've been, on average, on my good runs, I've been under-gemmed, you know? And you could blame, like, just me going fast and stuff and whatever, but extra gems are definitely something I should be looking towards. If I'm just trying to ad address, like, you know, my mistakes lately. You're also on the fence. It's a tough. It's a tough one to justify, especially like five seconds of almost five seconds of time loss. If you do everything right in this level, you know that's not counting any mistakes or whatever. Like it's just it's it is hard to justify, <laughs> you know, versus not losing five seconds oh. or whatever three second three to five seconds you know, depending on how you're measuring it. And it's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter because you'll have extra gems to burn later. So it evens out. But it's like, uh, I don't fucking know. It's tough. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was feeling. Um, Josh, is that it's like, I feel like my actual gem route in any percent is good. It's just that I haven't been hitting them all, you know, because I'm going super fast. So it's just it's just kind of a catch 22. Um, actually. No, yeah, actually, whatever Laura says about this strat is just the truth. So we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. I'm in no mood for semantics. Or arguing about whatever frames. Yeah, it would even, that's kind of what it would be, is like, it would even out, like, just, just talking about artisans and peacekeepers pacing on these splits is, um is like it would even out if i had like first try mama proxy even if i did do this like i could i could probably still exit cliff town ahead so that's like a consideration but again i'm not trying to get too deep on the semantics about it it's just kind of i'm just kind of going by what my heart's telling me here yeah 36 37 noise proud of you that's awesome i know you're probably going for like low 36s in your is probably on your horizon but 36, 37 is no joke. That's pretty good. What's up, Chloe? If you've been doing IL practice, Composer, knowing, like, the caliber of player you are, like, I, I think, like, a 35. You know, keep, keep the goals, like, realistic. But I think, you know, you're well on your way to getting 35 Dreamweavers on good runs. I don't think that's too far of a stretch at all. 
But yeah, thanks for the good luck, Chloe. Good to see you. But you know, in due time, you know how it is. What's up, Gaia? Appreciate the good luck. I'll probably jump into runs pretty quickly here. I might do like a couple rats and then just fucking hit it. Did an ice cavern IL before some of you guys got here. Just looking at this thief strap. That's how you want to do it. Alright. Um, yeah, let's head over to uh, Nasties. I might want to look at Blowhard real quick. I've been kind of throwing runs there. I'm just going to just spot, just do the IL strat a couple times and then we'll do the rat. Nothing wrong with a little warm up. Yeah, I mean, I have to. After Kara, like, posted that comparison that, like... Because I didn't realize I had seen the IL strat here. And I didn't realize that it's a full platform cycle ahead of the the fastest version of the old strat. I didn't realize... I thought they were the same cycle when I first saw this. But they're actually not, apparently. So I kind of have to go for it with that context. I like it. It's not bad. I think this can be done in 120, in all honesty. Except when you get when your greens go like that. Ugh. Body block. That's the thing though, it's like I feel like I'm definitely at risk of like missing shit more. Just cause I'm just, just cause I'm not as used to this strat. Get body blocked by that wizard. Like I've been fucking up those gold chests like crazy with this strat. Just don't go too fast. That's the key. It's not awful. It's cool. I have no criticism. Still just barely hitting it. Let me just look at uh, this little spot right here. Uh, set a save state. Should probably respawn the enemies, huh? Oh, and the door's not closed yet. Get this guy. <laughs> I mean, it's you can't really practice this without practicing the whole cycle, right? Just getting that jump right there. Sometimes I fuck up. It's funny that this door has like a fucking hole in the top. I wonder if that was intentional or not. Surely it was. To kind of let the player know that there's something back there. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing any percent. No, you're good, Karate. Welcome, welcome. Okay, I'm going to head over to Nasty's, do a couple rats, and then uh, let's get out of here. Let's do some runs, I mean. Couple of rats. What's up, Das Cats? Welcome. I don't think you can fit Spyro into that hole, unfortunately. Maybe. This won't work. What's up, Wee Witchy? Let me go ahead and fix my broken emotes here. Alright. 
Do, 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 do. <laughs> that's my problem, guys. That's my that's my big problem is, and especially under pressure, I'm much more likely to do that. Pressing right too early. You have to press it on frame two, not frame one. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy how like nerves will really affect something like that. You know, I have to be really aware of not like pressing right too early here. Especially under pressure. And then you and then that happens because I press it too late. Yeah. So it's a definitely tough. That might have worked. What's up, Bizkimus? Welcome. What's up, Ryan? Alright. The practice tool I'm using is called uh, the practice codes. If you type exclamation point practice codes in the chat, there'll be a link to a Discord that you can... that gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to set them up. How do you do this? Oh, whatever, I shouldn't fuck around. Let's get into some runs, shall we? I think I've... I had a little quick warm-up today, but I think let's just fucking send it. You know? Oh, Shinobi, thank you for the five dollars. Says, hope you get some good runs today. Thank you, man. Thank you for uh, give, giving me a little boost of excitement there at the start. Appreciate that. All right, um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, hold on. Let me, uh, while I get my game loaded up here. While I get the game loaded up, let me just mess with uh, some mic stuff. So yeah, so I'm actually not gonna boost them. I might boost it one decibel, I think. Might be the move. Oh! Yeah, because if I yell like that, it barely does. It's like sometimes it'll be a little quiet. I'm trying to get the mic settings like perfectly dialed in. I'll boost it one decibel and that's... It's my final offer. Test. Uh, yeah, that's perfect right there. I also have the uh, audio ducking on the game as well. So, um, The hard reset I did there was to switch discs because the hacked version of the game is on a burnt disc. Three, two, one, go. But I play on, obviously, when I do runs, I just use a vanilla copy of the game. Official copy. You don't have to, though. You could uh, burn an official, just a vanilla copy of the game onto a disc and use that for runs as well, which is kind of cool. I, I'll probably end up doing that in the future. Once my whatever current discs shit themselves. What's up, Wistful? <laughs> Pace pals in the chat. Time for a new world record. We'll see. Hey, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but Ash just got another new world record in this category. The world record was 37.18 and is now 37.17. And that would be the second uh, one second PB that Ash uh, got in the last couple weeks here. So pretty cool. GG's to Ash for that. The th I, I'm like kind of salty a little bit because the thumbnail of their video is like... It's like, so it says in big letters, it says, sorry, and it has a picture of the fucking happy Spyro emote. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Are they saying sorry to me? <laughs> like, is this targeted? <laughs> targeted thumbnail? <laughs> but yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Man. 
Good run by Ash. And before anyone asks, yes, I am still going for world record. I, I can still beat it as it currently stands. I, I Here's like my thing is once it gets under 3710, you know, just for where I'm at in the game, I feel like I'm not going to necessarily be going for world record at that point. But right now we're still in the high 3710s, so I still have a shot. Thankfully, Ash has been getting one second records, you know, that's, 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 that's the best uh, case scenario, actually. Ah. What's up, Fawny Air? Thank you for the good luck. Can't wait for my world record thumbnail. I've just been, you know, call me like, call me boring, call me old fashioned. I've really just been enjoying doing like in game screenshots. It's like for like, say I get a new PB, it's like Spyro like staring down nasty or trying to flame him or something. I just, I feel like, you know, no text or anything like that. I feel like that's way more like epic than any. But yeah, I definitely I respect that Ash has em has embraced the meme thumbnail approach. Very very funny. Oh no. Oh fuck. <laughs> Let's try this jump a few times. Uh, I'm going to trim my thumb. Speaking of thumbnails, I'm going to trim my thumbnail real quick. I'll be right back. One second. While I... Let me just reload to the menu here. Actually, I'll start another run, but I'll just leave it on the intro cutscene. While I grab a little nail clipper. Just to keep things moving here. BRB, one second. Rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful here in the five worlds, or is it six, for a dragon's age. We now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Ganort character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple. He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That does it! Looks like I got some things to do. No, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss this. I'm sorry, I'm like still cutting. I'm still trimming my nail. Give me a sec. <laughs> I think we're good here. Yeah, we're good. I didn't quite cut it perfectly, but at least now I'm not going to jam my thumb any anywhere. Three, two, one, go. Thumbnail ideas. Uh, put a me, t me texture. What does that mean? A me texture? Okay, rolling. You say that like that's a thing that exists. <laughs> Who the fuck has made a texture of me? Some fucking PS2 graphics shit. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of true, Riki. It's like, you gotta, like, not trim your nails too much because then it's like they feel weird, I guess. I don't even know how to describe it. But, you know, obviously you don't want them long to where they're, like, jamming into the buttons and stuff and hurting you. So I think I got them at a good length here.
Hey guys, am I mean? Am I mean to to new viewers? What do you guys think? Somebody left a, a critical comment on my last stream saying how that I'm, I'm mean to new viewers. I should be nicer to them uh, about uh, about like uh, dumb questions and stuff. Kinda. What do I mean? Oh man, maybe I am meaner than I thought. I thought I thought I was pretty. I thought like okay, call me defensive. I think I'm pretty like um, understanding and responsive to most questions. Like if you ask a question, I'll answer it. Now I might make fun of you a little bit. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm like mean spirited about it, especially with like new new viewers and stuff. People who are just genuinely. I think for me, it's like I can tell when someone's just genuinely interested in the run and curious about it. And I'll usually answer whatever question it is, especially if it's like a gameplay related thing. And I might be a little snarky about it, but I don't think I'm like mean per se. But maybe maybe I am meaner than I thought. Maybe I maybe I do turn off new viewers. Turn off prospective runners. That's definitely not my goal. But I mean, who cares what I think? I mean, what matters is what you guys think on this, on this topic. If I don't think I'm mean, but you guys think I'm being a fucking asshole, then that's like, obviously, that's something I would, I would like to correct. What's up, Siyun? I definitely will say I have been mean to people in the past in my chat. Like, no, no doubt about it. Like, and I'm definitely not afraid to tell someone to shut the fuck up and quit being an annoying little bitch, you know? But I'm just saying just for like the normal average new viewer who's not being like a fucking pain in my ass, you know, <laughs> like, I, I feel like I'm pretty cool, right? I don't know. I'm, I come off as mean sometimes, but intentionally. Overall, it doesn't come up too often. Hmm. Kind, of, kind of what I'm getting from this discussion is that I am more mean than I'm giving myself credit for. Like, I am kind of a bit of an asshole to you guys. That's like kind of the vibe I'm getting. Like, more so than I, than I think. And for whatever reason, you know, like, fuck, I missed a 10 there. Dude, what the fuck was that flop? <laughs> like, it's okay. It's not like I should be super embarrassed or anything. It's just, um, I guess I should just, uh, I don't know. I, sh I should try not to be as mean. This is definitely str something I've struggled with in the past as well with my stream. So it's not like a, it's not like a new concept for me. It's just... I think it's one of those things I have to remind myself sometimes that, like, people aren't necessarily on the same page as whatever the fuck I'm saying. Like, so... You gotta think about it, like, from the perspective that someone just came into the stream right now, and whatever you're saying is the first thing they're hearing, you know? A lot of times when I'm talking to people in my chat, there's a lot of context and whatever that's, like... You know, if I go off on someone because they've typed the same fucking thing, like, f five days in a row, you know? Well, to someone just coming in, it's just, it just like appears so innocent. So it's like, just, just like, just relax, you know. I did not want to block you from because you were from Chile. I wanted to block you because you wouldn't shut up about being from Chile. 
But like I said, you know, there's like context there, and for a new viewer just coming in, like you might hear that and be like, "Damn, Deo's so fucking mean for that," you know? Like I don't know. I don't know if it's even really like a behavior that I should be trying to actively change or not. Like if it's if it's really a, a big problem, I'm, I'm not really sure that it is. But I don't know also if I should be like working to try to fix fix whatever. I'm not really sure where uh, what I should be doing is. I think what I'm trying to say should be doing differently. I mean, it, this might be one of those things where, you know, no matter what I do, somebody is going to have something critical to say about me. You know, I think on the vast, on the vast majority of you guys, like, you don't think I'm that bad. Maybe I might be a little bit of a dick sometimes, but I'm not like egregiously bad. And I definitely, hopefully I don't come off like I don't appreciate everyone that watches because I do. Um... But even if I were to try to like change my attitude like in a big way and try never to be like openly critical of people in my chat and just like just block them and move on and just try to ignore it and whatever, like just take a whole nother approach where I only spread positivity type type energy, <laughs> which maybe that's the root or maybe it's not. I don't know. But um, like even if I were to fully commit to that. I feel like there would still be someone that had something critical to say about me, you know what I mean? So it's it's one of those things where it's like, maybe it's just best that I just be myself, you know? And if if that if I'm a little bit of an asshole for that, I'm the, I, it is embarrassing for me because I don't want to come off like an asshole. I don't want to be like, especially I don't want to turn off like a new viewer or a new, um, especially a new sp potential new speedrunner. So as long as I'm not like scaring people away from like my stream or speedrunning, like in, in a significant way, I, th I think I'm okay. And I don't think I'm doing that. But at the same time, it's like I do want to be a better version of myself. I don't want to be like... I don't want to be like just known as like a fucking douchebag, you know? It's just, it's hard for you. Like I said um, in Clifftown, it's kind of hard for me to... Uh, to know exactly like what exactly I should be changing attitude-wise. Because whenever I go off on someone in my chats, because they're they're an annoying bitch. Like I mean, I <laughs> like I'll stand by that, you know. And, and to me, it's funny. It's it's not even like meant to be like a personal like dig or attack or anything. Or if someone asks like the same question I've heard a million times, it's like I'll, I'll give like a funny little sarcastic answer. I'm I'm not trying to be like mean spirited about any of that. So I think it's a hard line to walk where uh, where I do convey those sorts of feelings, that sarcasm in a way that doesn't feel mean-spirited. And the truth is, is that no matter how I try to convey it, somebody is going to interpret that like, damn, he's just mean. He's just a mean, d doesn't appreciate anything, whatever. Even though in my mind, it's like, I'm just having fun, really just like, just talking shit on you guys, you know? So there's definitely a real perspective shift there that I might never like overcome. I think just in my natural being as a, uh, as a streamer. That the only way to really overcome that would be to just eliminate all negativity from my from my expression on stream, which is something I don't really think I, I need to do or should do. No, this has, it, it has, been, I'm not reading every single chat right now, by the way, so thank you to everyone who's, uh, I'll, I'll read some here in the, before I talk anymore, I'll read some of you guys' chats here on the, uh, on the loading screen.
Ooh, damn, I missed that. I wasn't paying. I'm like kind of like partially reading chat. I need to focus on the game here. Wow, that is so bad. I hear you, Dilly. I hear you about that. Like, it's kind of like, uh, like I was saying earlier, it's like no matter how I try to improve myself or change or whatever, like there's always going to be someone that has something negative to say or just doesn't like me or whatever. Like that's, that's something I have to accept. So maybe like just over one comment about me being mean or whatever, like it's really not something I should give too much thought to. I'm just kind of curious where you guys' heads were about it. It seems like you guys uh, are sort of, I would say you guys are sort of mixed on uh, on how you feel about me being a fucking asshole, basically, sometimes. Not not all the time, just like sometimes. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting question because you guys really do see me at like my ugliest. Like, <laughs> you guys see me in my darkest moments of just like grinding a game for hours and just being so upset with it. And just, and really, I do take that out on my chat sometimes. And that's that's one thing I try. I've been trying not to do since my spiral. Whoa! Oh, I got a. Oh my god! I got an eyelash in my eye. Fuck. Oh. Uh. Oh my god! Good thing that happened at the end of the level there. Oh. Uh. Fuck. Oh, I, have to, I have to play without my glasses. I swear to God, I'm not like getting emotional or anything. It's just, I literally got a, that was like a crazy, like physical interception by my eyelash there. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Everybody hates me. No, it's not like that. <laughs> it's a freeze champ. Yeah, I saw simply comparing my, uh, yeah, comparing his chest hair to mine on stream. He, he seemed, he respected it. He seemed to respect my chest hair. And then he went on to rub his own body. So that was a pretty good clip. See, my attitude is part of American. Pe so I'm just like every American to you is like what you're saying. That sounds kind of fucked up. It sounds kind of a like a generalizing. I don't know if I appreciate that, but whatever. I guess I'm just the typical burger eating fat fuck. I can't really say that it's anything besides that. I did eat some burgers yesterday, and I am fat, so... <laughs> like, I can't really argue with the stereotypical American lens of things. I do fit that mold. I'm not, it's not like I'm doing anything to break that mold or anything. You've heard other runners comment about noticing a positive change in me? Uh, thanks, Funny Air. That's, that's like... <laughs> when I think about that whole situation, I'm like kind of embarrassed, you know? Like, that, that's really what it is. It's like... It's pretty embarrassing to acknowledge that, like... I'm a fucking dick. Like, even if I'm better now, I, st I still am to some people. I just am a fucking dick, like... And I don't really want to be known that way. And, uh... Even if at one point I was worse and now I'm better, it just, it kind of, it does hurt to think that, like, oh man, I'm just a fucking dick, dude. Like, you can't, it's hard, it's hard to get over that. It's just an embarrassing situation, really. And whether that's because of, like, me getting, like, all emotionally affected by the grind or, or just maybe that's just who I naturally am. Um, I can't, I, I don't really know. I don't really know, but it is embarrassing, I will say, getting the periodic comment like, Deo, you need to be nicer to people. It's like... It, it makes me feel like people think I don't appreciate them, like, being here and watching and stuff, you know? So... And I, and, I, and I always say this, anytime I'm talking about something like this, even if you're the most annoying and I fucking, like, get super, like, heated and fucking ban you or whatever, whatever the case, whatever I have said to any of you guys, I want you to know that I appreciate you being here. Like, that's, like, the number one thing to me. And I think that's what, like, embarrasses me the most, I think, is that it's, like, 
If I'm known to some of you guys as like some fucking asshole that like will just always make fun of you no matter what the fuck you say, um, then it really, it really, um, paints a picture of, um, of unappreciativeness, which I'm, I really, do, uh, am striving not to have. I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you, Rise. I mean, I, I think I'm going to, you know, not necessarily change anything in particular about my attitude or my the way I interact with you guys. I just figured it was interesting. It, it's worth talking about. It's nice to bring it up every once in a while because it's like, it's it's like sort of like a check. It's like, like, am I letting this whole like hobby get to my head or, or not? You know, I think it's just important to just put it all out there and just be like, hey, do you guys think I'm a fucking asshole? You know? And, you know, and it's the truth is it's mixed, you know, it's like most of you guys are just like, ah, oh, you're fine, whatever. But then, you know, and then some of you guys are like, no, actually, you kind of do hurt my feelings. <laughs> you know, and so it's like, and then and so it kind of puts me in a situation of like, man, I do. Should I what should I change? You know. And right now I'm currently in a in a conclusion of I don't think I really need to change anything. But. If there's something that I should change about, like, the way I interact with, uh, with my stream, I mean, feel free to, you know, let me know. But I just, I just don't think, uh, it's quite so bad that I need to be, like, try to change any particular behavior. I guess Fonnier said, it, it, there, there have been points where I have had to sort of readjust and change my behavior, but I don't, I don't think I'm currently in that place where I'm, like, taking out all my frustration on you guys or whatever. But maybe, again, maybe I'm wrong. Like, if you guys disagree, like, feel free to, like, share your thoughts or what you think I could be doing better as, like, a, as just a human being, you know? You feel ignored sometimes? Oh. Uh, no. I mean, that's not how it is to me, okay? I'm, I'm not trying to ignore you. I just don't read every single message. I, I I really don't. I hope that's not like you're taking that personally or anything. I want you to know, but I will say this just flat out, K. Like, I never intentionally ignore you. So if that's like your concern, I want you to know that that's not what's what's happening at all. I have no issues with you, K. I would tell you right now if I found you annoying or whatever. I don't. So the first wizard in the trio up top, why do you always skip them on the first supercharge? Uh, the trio up top. I mean, hold on. I mean, I'm trying to think what you mean. Because there's a, there's a, unfortunately, there's multiple trios of, of wizards in Wizard Peak. You mean after the dragon or before the dragon? I mean, I don't think it's like a secret time traveler that like the way I am and I've said this before the way I am on stream is just different than how I am in real life. I think I think you can attest to this having met oh. me in real life. White Snowpaw, thank you for the prime. Appreciate it. And Fonny Air, thank you for the gift as well. Appreciate you guys. Do I find you annoying? Yeah, sometimes for sure. You know, some of your messages are just I mean, most of your messages are just trolls. But, you know, at the same time, it's like you're just joking around. So I'm not. It's nothing too mean spirited. Like Resident Evil, like you're all, you're like two sides of the coin, and the other side of the coin where it's like annoying and pissing me off is like Fortnite Hills. You remember Fortnite? How I had to ban him the other day because all of his trolling is like was like, oh, you suck, you know, fuck you, time loss. But your type of trolling is like is just like just say something random and funny. And so I, I appreciate the more positive. Like there's different like intensities of negativity when it comes to trolling, right? And you're you're on the positive end of that spectrum, so it, it doesn't bother me like that much. If that makes sense. At least that's just how, kind of like how I view you. But yeah, you are you are definitely like a big jokester to me for sure. Like, it's hard for me to take anything you say seriously, which is fine. I mean, like in a fucking chat room, like why, why nothing needs to be so serious, right? So it's all good.
Yeah, Resident Evil just wants me to fuck their mom. I mean, how can I argue with that? Some, like, true fan behavior there. <laughs> I lived. I thought it was good. Wow, come on. Slow. I'd make a great stepdad. Uh, you know, I don't really want to get into a hypothetical family talk right now. That's just kind of weird for me. I don't ever want to be a father, be it stepdad or whatever. So, And that's just that. So I don't really want to play that hypothetical game. But I do appreciate the compliment. There's nothing that I can do that'll universally please everyone. Uh, yeah, true. I mean, that's kind of what I was saying earlier. I mean, like, I think this whole discussion is kind of like, you know, no matter what I do, I'm not going to make everybody. Like, there's always going to be some one random person in the YouTube comments that's like, you should be better. Be better. You know, you know, fucking like Twitter, like do better. You know? But, you know, it's, it's worth, you know, posing that to you guys, you know, and like getting like a real... Maybe not like a whole sample size, but like just uh, getting just more than one person's take on things. I, I feel like just talking to you guys about this on the during this little no reset here has been uh, enlightening. Like I said, my conclusion is that like I don't feel like I'm that much of a dick. I, um, I think the people who do see me as like a fucking asshole, um, I feel like they're getting the wrong impression of me. And on in a sense, that's on me and partially I think on them as well. Like. You know, so maybe my my humor doesn't resonate with everyone or the way I, you know, talk shit on people in my chat. Like people take that personally, you know, and so my stream isn't for everyone. You know, simply put, this isn't like a, I want everybody to watch my stream type of thing. It's an 18 plus stream where you'll get fucking chewed out if you're an annoying bitch. Like, that's just how it is. But at the same time, I don't want to be labeled as a fucking asshole for that. I don't want to be labeled as like unfair or uh, or even really insensitive for that. You know, I think I consider myself like pretty sensitive, not not to get too like not to act too high and mighty. But that that's like that's like kind of a bad thing, honestly. I'm I'm kind of overly sensitive at times, especially on topics like this, right? So um, yeah, I think you know just to reiterate, my conclusion is that I'm good. And I'm not going to worry about it too much. But it was nice, uh, you know, leveling with you guys about what, how you really feel about me. You know, inviting the criticism. It's hard to invite the criticism sometimes on stream. You know, it's easy to just have an echo chamber. So, hope you guys said, feel like you said your piece to me. And sorry if I missed any messages. What is Jump Flame for? Uh, I don't know. It really depends what you're talking about. Jump Flame is pretty much useful for, um, for collecting spring chests. That's like its main use. It's fine to be sensitive. I mean, you know, it's like a, it's a spectrum, right? I mean, it's a, you could be, you could be not sensitive enough or you could be overly sensitive. I think I, I lean towards the overly sensitive side of, of, of it, you know? Well, yeah, it's good to be a little sensitive for sure. Oh, just flame, dude. Just flame. I'm, I tried to flame there. Della, I already answered your question. Della, Della will type the same question twice in all caps and then be like, Oh, you're, you say I'm annoying because I'm from Chile. Bitch, look at your the way you speak in my chat. <laughs> it's not because you're from Chile. It's because, it's because you're annoying, you know? And if I'm a dick for saying that out loud, then I guess I'm a dick. And you know what? Hey. And that's okay, because I still love you, Della. You know, it's all good. It's not meant to be personal. I think that's where the real disconnect can, can be sometimes. <laughs> so why do you jump flame? Why do I jump flame? There is a lag in chat. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're good. I'm not tripping. <laughs> how can how can I help my that's my thing is like 
It's like, how can I help myself but to, like, make fun of that, that whole situation? Like, I just think it's so funny. Like, but I think to some people, it's like me saying that, it's like, dude, you're so mean. You're such a dick, you know? So it's, it's really a perspective thing, I think. I think as long as you guys know that I'm not, like, trying to, like, personally, like, you know, it's not like I hate you or something if you annoy me, you know? In my chat, like, it's just a chat room, you know? As long as that's clear, I think that's the most important thing. Rather than me tiptoeing around that, you know, and being like, Della, can you please calm down? All right, let's keep the good vibes up, you know? Like, I'm not trying to be a fake-ass fucking streamer for you guys, you know? Like, I'll, I'll just keep whatever the fuck I'm feeling from you guys, whatever you guys are saying, I'm gonna keep it real, you know? And, and, if, and the truth is, is that's gonna make me look like a dick, and I, I have to accept that. That's, like, part of, like, me being kind of, like, overly sensitive. Like, I'm gonna reset this run. I don't like it anymore. Um... Is that it's like, I just have to just accept it, you know? People are, the way I interact and the things that inter that entertain me and I find funny, it's like, a lot of people are going to naturally see that as, oh, you're just a dick. But they don't understand that I appreciate every person that's here and that I don't, like, I don't hate anyone. Even if I choose someone out, it's like, I always try to end it with like, but thank you for being here and I love you anyways. And, you know, it's like, I try to, I think that's the important thing I got to do. Three, two, one, go. Just remind you guys that I love you, you know? This might be an abusive relationship, I'm not gonna lie, between me and my chat room sometimes, but... Um, in my mind, it's all in good fun. Like, once... And I've I've been guilty of this in the past, where I let it get to a point where it's, like, not fun anymore, and I'm, like, actually pissed, whether that's partly because of the game, and then I start getting kind of... I'd legitimately mad at you guys, and, like, emotionally heated about things. That's where I need to like draw the line and I've, I've been really good about that lately I feel like I haven't been like too like uh, Actually genuinely mad with anyone I've definitely called people annoying and banned people and shoot them out, but that's like that's all in my mind That's all in good fun as, as weird that might sound weird maybe to some of you guys I think that's probably where where the disconnect comes from Oh but yeah, I definitely think there's like a perspective difference here, especially talking about new viewers. Like a new viewer might not understand that perspective, which is why I have to like, um, which is why I have to like addendum every like little insult or whatever with, uh, but thanks for watching and I love you and it's all good, you know? As long as I'm keeping it real with that, then new viewers and I will be on the same page. I think that's like, that's, that's a key takeaway I could have from this conversation. What's up, Doggo? Thank you for the two dollars. Appreciate it. And Pims, uh, oh, that wasn't a. I thought that was a super chat, but thank you. Um, <laughs> hi, Pims. <laughs> You're good. Didn't mean to call you out there. But yeah, thank you, Doggo. Yeah, I've seen some similar uh, sentiments to what you're saying, Simful, about like, it's just hard to tell like, whether what I'm saying is personal, like a personal, like serious attack on, on you or not, you know? And I have to, it's my job to make it clear that it's not. I, t I totally get that. And so if anything, that's, that's what I need to work on. It's, it's not necessarily changing my behavior, it's just um, clarifying like, you know, that it's all good. Uh, anytime I choose someone out or I'm just like, you know, fuck you, bitch, you know. But thanks for watching. That's why I, that's literally why I say, but thanks for watching. And it's not meant, that part isn't sarcastic. <laughs> but it's it's hard not to make it sound sarcastic, right? Dick Butters, thank you for the resub. Appreciate that. No, I mean, I agree. I don't I don't know you guys personally at all. But and yet and yet people think that the shit I say to you is a personal attack. I mean, it's it just is what it is. I mean, I'm not. I, I wish people could just like hear the words I say and just not take them seriously at all. And a lot of you guys are good at that. Others of you guys are, uh, you know. Other you guys are like I said, like you're like me, you're like sensitive, you know, you don't like get like upset if a streamer like gets mad at you or something, you know. 
or chews you out, calls you a bitch, you know, in front of how you know, oh, in front of 200 people, you know, people get really touchy, you know, so. Uh, but that's but it's so true. It's like I don't fucking know any of you guys. I don't know you guys like that I can't even comment on how annoying or whatever I can only comment on what I see in my chat, you know And I'm never gonna filter like my opinions of what you guys are saying in my chat room I may sometimes read too deeply into them. I may sometimes misinterpret things But I can only go off of the words that I see the few chats that I see at any given time and um if they bother me, I'll let you guys know. I'll say, hey, shut the fuck up, you know? And, um... And still be like, hey, you know, but thanks for watching. Shut the fuck up, but thanks for being here, and I appreciate you. As long as I could convey that sort of vibe, then I think I'm on the right track. That's just my thought. Yes, I did see that simply reacted to my hairy chest on stream. He he looked at it, he was like, hold on, let's see the chest. And he was like, mm, all right. And then he put, the, and then he stood up and rubbed his nipples on in the camera. So yeah, just typical shirtless speedrunner behavior. What is jump flame? I don't know. I don't know. I never seen a jump flame. I never even been a jump flame. I don't know nothing about that. You know what's extra funny about that clip that kind of some extra context you guys don't realize is I've been to multiple GDQs that simply was in attendance for and I have definitely like had a short conversation with him. He has seen my face like over the years multiple times at GDQ events. So I think him watching that clip of me, I, this this is just like this is just a speculation, but I think him watching that clip of me, he's like, he, he didn't say it out loud, but it's kind of like, wait, do I know that guy? <laughs> it's like kind of it's like kind of that sort of thing. I, I feel like there was an element of that there while he was watching me. Having having just ever so slightly like acquaintance level experience with him. But that again, I will admit that maybe he just doesn't remember me at all. I'm reading way too deep into that. Jesus was the most influential. Oh my God. Was the most influential human, and just because he was really famous for revolutionizing the way we view belief season doesn't mean he was completely perfect or invincible. Okay, so what does this have to do with me cussing out my chat? <laughs> are you are you are we like making a metaphor here? Or you just wanted to talk about your favorite uh, deity or whatever? Je does Jesus count as a deity? No, because deities are like invincible, right? I mean, God is a deity, but is Jesus? Jesus is God, right? What's I look like? I look like homeless Jesus John Lennon. <laughs> good, good, uh, good copy pasta there, Sophie. <laughs> I'm like homeless Jesus John Lennon meets Sam Hyde and a bald duck. Want to hear about the Holy Trinity? No. Jesus is one third of God? Oh, okay, that's the Holy Trinity. Hold on, I think I know this, hold on. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? That's the Trinity. So God, Jesus, and I guess like your belief system, your spirituality, your your morals and all that, the Holy Ghost, whatever, whatever that means. That's like up for interpretation, I think. Maybe I'm like way off here. Now, now we're about to have a bunch of religious Bible study in the chat here. Am I like on the right track?
It's God, God, and God. Yes, I'm on the right track? Okay. I may, I may not be exactly correct with how I explained that, but... If I'm on the right track, then... If I get the general idea, then I'm good. It's the Holy Ghost. Not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. But the, what does the Holy Ghost represent? Does it represent, like, um... Like, all of our actions and, you know, what, what drives us to do good in the world type, type beat? Like, our soul, so to speak, is like a, a version of, like, the Holy Ghost. Is that what that means? I don't understand, like, exactly what it means. Is that one of those parts of religion that's kind of, like, left up to interpretation? What is the Holy Ghost, you know? It's, is it a literal ghost? <laughs> yeah. For Time Traveler, I think it is. Fucking, uh, what's that, uh, what's that ghost show? Casper? It's fucking Casper. Yeah, it seems to me, based on you guys' answers, it seems to me that, like, the Holy Ghost is, like, kind of a... It's a broad concept that, like, can be interpreted a number of ways. Yeah, it's Casper. It could be Casper, you know, if you really, you know, and want to interpret that way. We're doing theology? Yeah, I mean, hopefully not too deeply. I don't even remember what the original question was. Oh yeah, my question was, does Jesus count as God? Like, or can I call Jesus a deity? Because a deity is a God. And people said that Jesus is one, th is lit mathematically speaking, Jesus is one third of God. So he is God, but just a part of it. That is what I learned. Yeah, I mean, different. I'm sure different versions of Christianity and Catholicism have different takes on all that, for sure. By the way, to those who are curious, I am not religious. I am not a God-fearing man. I only fear the speedrun gods. The closest, I'm not even, this isn't even a joke. I, I, I'm saying this 100% seriously. The closest thing I have to a, re a religion is playing this game. <laughs> if that's, if that sounds sad to some of you guys, I mean, it's just the truth. Because think about it. I fucking, I, I do, in my mind, I do a holy pilgrimage every day to try to look inward through my actions to do something what I believe to be good in the world by playing this game and, you know, entertaining you guys to spread, you know, you could say in a way that I'm like spreading the speedrun God's love, you know, or just, or just generally speaking, spreading God's love through streaming. I mean, you could say that. Like, I don't think that's like too crazy of a stretch. And furthermore, furthermore, I, the closest I've ever felt to feeling spiritually powerful or feeling any sort of spiritual energy in my waking life is when I'm on a good run. People who speedrun know what I'm talking about, but like the feeling of being like deep into a pace that's better than anything you've ever done before, the the nerves, the feeling, there's just some otherworldly feeling to it that really feels like um, like you're seeing God in a way. Now, if what I'm saying sounds sacrilegious or offensive to some of you guys, I want you to know that I respect and, and love all religions. And um, I am merely trying to square my spirituality with with uh, with the context of 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 the world, you know. So just know that I'm not intending to be like uh, offensive or anything with with what I'm saying here. But I mean, I hope it's it's at least respectable my my spiritual viewpoint on speedrunning. It's like I said, it's the closest thing I have to a spiritual system. It may not be as vibrant or as like belief based as a, as perhaps a traditional religion, but I think 
I think there is something to be said for the spirituality of what I'm doing for me, for something that's, so, I mean, doing anything, I think that's so close and near and dear to your heart that like you feel like has some impact on the world. I think there's like a vert, there is a religion in that. There is a spirituality in that. So yeah, those are just some of my thoughts. That, that's like, those are some of my personal religious beliefs. But yeah, I don't, I'm not particular, I don't ascribe to any particular religion, Christianity or whatever. You could call me agnostic, I guess. <laughs> you know, I don't pray to spy. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not as belief uh, based. Um... The belief isn't, doesn't come through like prayer. Um, the belief comes through the, uh, through discipline. Like belief uh, for me is like something like believing in myself, believing in speed running is something that comes not through a, like, um, through like manifesting. You could say that like prayer is sort of like a form of manifesting something within yourself. And I don't think that like, I, I I need to manifest within myself to show that I believe in myself in this game. I merely have to play every day and try my best. And in that way, I am praying and showing belief in my system. Does that make sense? Uh, it's definitely not the same thing at all. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna pretend like what I'm doing is akin to prayer, but you know, is it, but, you know, to play, to play devil's advocate, no pun intended, it's like, um, it's like, we are praying for a good pace, you know, are we not? Like, who does, how often do people like pray in the chat for something to go well, you know? So it's not, it's not so different, is my point. Speedrunning as like a full time, like hobby life pursuit, you know, or even just as like a part time thing, you know, it's like. I think any religious person will tell you that there's God within everything that you do, every part of life and everything that you do. And I think I've just experienced that sense of spirituality the strongest from this hobby. But I'm still like agnostic and stuff. I'm not I'm not like off the deep end like like the speedrun gods control everything type type beat or anything. It's just a it's just like kind of a, trying to square my life with that of someone who just looks at the world a different, you know, different. Like we're just not, we're just not so different, you know, that's kind of all I'm really saying here. Alrighty, well, hey, we're on a pretty solid pace here. Not the fastest pace ever, but definitely a solid one. Definitely uh, PB-able, maybe world recordable if we play well here. I've definitely done good uh, gem count-wise, I think. So we'll see if uh, if things don't go awry in these next few homeworlds. Resident Evil, thanks for the uh, 199. Appreciate that. For holy purposes, please do the monk chant for Inspire to why I I yum. It fits pretty well in this uh, level, actually. Why I I yum. What's a Kura place? I don't know what that is.
By the way, I don't know if I shouted this out, but thank you, Dick Butters, for the tier one. Appreciate it. 16 months, and thank you for the good luck. Love you, Dick. Ooh, I missed that blue. Playing it thorough. Mm. Alright, well. Rip. Definitely losing some time here. Hura is sushi? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I was talking to Rico. I think the next uh, sushi thing we might do, I might have him drive down here to Richmond. Because there's a all-you-can-eat sushi place right by us. It's a pretty good, really, really good deal, really good quality fish. 30 bucks, you get a free drink. You'll even get a free beer if they want, you know. So, pretty good deal. Definitely better than the $100 that we spent each at Revolving Sushi. That shit was great, though. That was really good quality stuff. Yeah, free beer. Just one, you get one free beer, to clarify. <laughs> you don't get endless free beer. Oops. Yeah, I'm gonna go wide here. Please make this. Okay, I didn't get fucked by the tornado. That's nice. Either the, okay, I'm actually not that far behind here, despite that bonk. Um, I might not catch this. I'm on the bad cycle here. We'll see if I catch it. Yeah, we will catch it, but it's definitely some time loss. Hi, baby. Oh, awesome. Sarah got me Indian food and bagels. It's awesome. Yeah, and she didn't pay for them either. That's even better. <laughs> it's a fucking free food. I'm I'm actually out of rice, so I might I might stop at the store today and get some more stuff because we're running low. Mm-hmm. I've been getting really good, uh, I've been using this, like, curry paste, um, uh, as a base for my curries that I've been making lately. It's been so good. <clears throat> What's my favorite beer? I've been drinking, um, uh, this lager called Vienna Lager. It's an East, from an East Coast brewing company called Devil's Backbone. So yeah, I've really been enjoying the beer from Devil's Backbone. They have a really good lager and a really good um, IPA as well. And they're they're cheap too. They're like like 18, 19 bucks for a 12 pack. So it saves a few bucks. I mean, relatively cheap for like a quality craft beer. Yeah, 8 point IPA, I love that stuff. I've taken a break from it lately because I've been drinking a lot of it. So I switched over to the Vienna Lager, which is also really good. Yeah, an IPA once is disgusting. Unfortunately, most IPAs are pretty disgusting. It takes some, like... Not only do you have to kind of have the acquired taste to appreciate, like, a good IPA, but also you have to be able to get past that, like, bitter hoppiness that... I, I totally get that people don't like them. But, yeah, once you've tried a lot of IPAs and you have, like, a good one, it's like, oh, yeah. Like, a good IPA in the right situation is, like, you just can't beat it for me. I okay, missed the blue there, but it should be fine. Some double IPAs are good. There's a there's another brewery out here in uh, on the East Coast that does a really nice deepa. Um, there's one at Bingo, the arcade, the Brewcade. That's pretty good. They they have some good deepas out here, but I tend to be more of a uh, Citra IPA guy. There's like different types of IPAs, right? <laughs> Mm. 
But another really good uh, IPA you can get from most big box grocery stores uh, in America is called Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA. And most Imperial IPAs are like really dark and, you know, really bitter and almost sludgy and like too much, you know. But the Voodoo Ranger Imperial IPA is really good. It's very smooth for being 9%. Like, it's very smooth. But yeah, if you guys, you know, if you're the type of person that doesn't really drink much beer or doesn't care for IPAs or craft beers and stuff, you, you wouldn't like any of these. Oh, you had like a fruity beer? Sometimes I feel like uh, breweries can go a little overboard on the fruity aspect with beers. I think possibly trying to reach like a wider audience, you know, of people that wouldn't typically like craft beer. And so it ends up falling in like a, like somewhere that's like the worst of both worlds. But very occasionally you'll get a fruity beer that's just fucking immaculate. I find that really fruity sours can be uh, can be really good. Like a real like fucking like some crazy like mango or not mango but like I don't even know some like peach lambic white cranberry who knows what the fuck you know. <laughs> Pomegranate you see that sometimes. McLove Ultra. Yeah, that's what I get. That's uh, the free beer that I get at uh, Sushi when I go. As far as light beer goes, it's it's fine. I'm not, I'm not too picky when it comes to like the real cheap stuff. But I, I must say, I do prefer American lager over Mexican. Just slightly less piss tasting. I don't like that creamy quality that Mexican lager has. Like PBR. Try German beer. I mean, all right. I'm going to tell you right now, like, I could probably go out of my way to go get, like, German-style beer. But it's not going to be the same thing as, like, drinking, like, beer in Germany. That's that's the one of the cool things about, like, about a uh, beer, I think, is that uh, depending on where you are in the world, it's, it's like a different product, you know, despite it being the same, like, brand or whatever. Like, the freshness is really, like, an important aspect of it and bottling and transport and all that sort of stuff it's like that also with uh even with soda like you know if you if you have like a fountain soda at like a shitty 7-eleven it's not going to taste as good as a fountain soda from uh mcdonald's sure the difference is minute but it's definitely there you know and a lot of that has to do with just transportation time and storage and things like that and you know refrigeration throughout that process Versus, you know, having something that's more locally brewed that has, you know, less of those factors impacting it. It just makes for uh, for a different different experience depending on where you are. So I have a feeling that like I could try some German beers, but you know, it's the same thing with like trying to get into Guinness. You know, as an American, it's like sure they sell Guinness, but it's like it's just not the same thing as what they have in Ireland. There's no real point in me trying to be so international with my beer taste. It's like you're paying you're paying extra for like an import export fee for taxes and tariffs just for a like a, in my opinion what's going to end up being an inferior product in most cases. So I say keep it local with your uh, with your beers and whatnot. Yeah, go ahead, bring me one. That sounds good. I'll definitely chug it. I'm I, hey, I'm no fucking. Uh, I'm no, uh, what's the word, um, I'm no snob. I'll fucking, I'll drink whatever you put in front of me, man. <laughs> and I'll like it too. You know? That's the beautiful thing about beer. It's like, hey, you know, no matter which one, which kind you like or whatever, like, a true beer drinker will just fucking drink whatever the fuck you put in front of them. And it's like, hey, cheers, you know? It's always a cheers. I'll drink whatever. I mean, I'll try whatever. I'll put it that way. I'm not trying to drink the dredges of a of some brewer's like fucking sewer system or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, all beer is valid. I'm definitely not a snob in this sense.
How are we doing? We're like a second ahead. What's the gem count? We are at 379. Ooh, we are on a very nice gem count. Guys, if we clutch up here and skip some gems, we could get a little bit ahead. And it's not going to be easy. He turned around, that guy. Sucks. I'm gonna keep YOLOing, though. Wish I would've got that time in. I'm gonna YOLO this first room down here and then try to be thorough. From downtown! Oh, well, there goes my time save. Oh my god. <laughs> I might be run dead there. I've never actually seen him actually like ru like go at you from that direction. It reminds me that I should really just try to keep the charge going there. Another five miss. Definitely burning some gems here, but he's grabbing a few of those flame charges there. Definitely gonna be in the red now though because of that little eat. Lesson learned, like don't slow down. To if you're gonna do that strat, don't even slow down there and worry about that guy's green. Yeah, lesson learned, floor it. <laughs> no, gently press the gas pedal. Floor it! No, SpongeBob! <laughs> oh my god, please work. Thank you. This is kind of, this is a pretty slow bog, actually. Unfortunately. It's had the opportunity to be a fast bog, but whatever. That's the way the cookie shits. See if I can not lose sparks here. Ooh, oh wow, I got lucky. That frog was was eyeballing me. No, don't do it, Laura. Don't do that. Don't you're gonna regret that. That is some disgusting freak bitch. That's like some Joe Rogan like fucking hello freak bitches type fucking shit, bro. You're you're crazy for that. I mean, you know, if you love hot, if you've tried it before, I'm assuming you've never tried it before. I feel like you're gonna be underwhelmed. Like as long as you go into it ready to be underwhelmed, then then only good things will happen. But if you're gonna be comparing it to the quality of a standard pizza, then you're probably gonna not be happy. I don't know. That that's me. I don't know if you love hot. Maybe you're a fucking super stuffed crust slut. I don't mean to project my own opinions upon you. Maybe you'll love it, I don't know. Maybe you're just that, like, as you say, like a disgusting whore. I respect it. I, I really can't hate on that. You, you know yourself better than I do in that sense. Yeah, if you're tempted, just try- just so you can say you tried it, just fucking do it. If it's the same price or whatever, you might as well. But uh, don't expect anything- don't expect a five-star hot dog or anything. Yeah, that, it's from a fast food place, like, I don't know, it, it, it would make me kind of queasy. But that's just me. You're doing it, just go for it. Don't let me stop you. Don't let me stop you from living your dreams, Laura. I feel like this pizza has your name on it. Not that far behind. I, I might still be able to PB this. I'm not sure. Oh, 
I, know, I won't get my hopes up. Hot dog good, pizza good, hot dog and pizza good. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. Like I said, I'm not going to argue with that logic. You live your best life, my fellow hot dog pizza lovers. That's unfortunate. I was very close to working. This is more time lost. Now PB's dead officially. Please just don't lose sparks here. Okay. Didn't decide what to do there. That was a jump flame charge moment. I know some of you guys like that. Any jump flamers in the chat? You ordered it? Nice. Laura, are you the type of dog to uh, to order your pizzas well done? I'm a well done pizza kind of guy. I did not need that blue bone. But whatever. Pizza's 18 inches, that's like pretty big. One YouTuber you think people need to be aware of is Big Tug. Um, okay. More of a flame jumper than a jump flat. I respect it. Flame jumper sounds just badass. That sounds like some Xbox Live username shit. Yeah, whatever happened to boneless pizza? Laura, Laura literally ordered a pizza with a boner in it. With the full meat inside. Alright, probably gonna be over 10 seconds behind. Yeah. Thanks for the good luck, Ash. Oh my god, I'm gonna miss the fucking blue here. I threw Bog, Ash. Very, very sad. Sad run. Could have PB'd. I'm missing that. I think I should be okay on gems. I did not check. Yo, Ash, what? GG's on the- everyone type GG in the chat for Ash. New world record, love to see it. 37-17. And thankfully, a one-second PB still giving me hope that I could catch up, potentially still, for now. So, very nice. But now, what I will say, since I have Ash here, is that the thumbnail of that video says, Sorry, and then has a picture of the, the happy Spyro emote. And, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm, not one to, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, that, felt, that, that thumbnail felt a little targeted to me. <laughs> Maybe I'm maybe I'm just over maybe I'm reading too deeply into this. <laughs> no. Little little Deo jab in the thumbnail there. Oh my god, come on. Boo at why boo at? That's doing good. Yeah, I was, I was trying to start beef right now. Or, may, or maybe they didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> that could be the case, too. I'll, I'll let Ash say their piece. Or say nothing. It seems like Ash is saying nothing right now, so... Respect. I respect the, uh, the, little, the little friendly competition, we'll say. This competition's still friendly. <laughs> I'm, even if I'm, like, still, like, the underdog here, this is still looking friendly. This competition isn't ugly yet. I'm still smiling, thankfully. Yeah, fake beef. <laughs> Laura getting that fake beef on her pizza. <laughs> Laura's pizza just catching strays.
<laughs> oh, okay. That actually wasn't a targeted. E okay. I, I genuinely I couldn't tell because I I figure that picture is like synonymous with like my emotes and stuff. So, but then again, yeah, I have to keep it real. I'm not the one that drew that originally. It's like you said, Ashford. You just look up bad Spyro drawing. That's like one of the first results. Uh, what's my gem count? It's bad. I'm just gonna grab these. This one sucks. Doesn't matter. All right, now we're back to a good gem count. Good. And I'll grab the yellows. This run is not. This jock is not that deep. No, no brain power required. Saving that for a, for a good run later. Oh, I love getting that, man. The rising uh, spring chest feels so good. Those stickers I gave out ESA. Yeah, I know they're all they've they're completely um scratched off, right? They're just white. Right? What are you saying that's a bad thing? <laughs> I I got those stickers from a um from like a this was like the day before leaving for ESA. I went to like a a local print shop and was like, "Hey, do you guys do stickers?" And they're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "All right, make a sticker out of this." Like I sent them the picture. They're like, all right. And they seemed fine at first, but then I put one on my phone. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> this is like after I've like given them all away and stuff. But I don't care. Whatever. If my stickers don't last. For, I mean, I, I, like what? Is a sticker supposed to last forever? Like, it's fine. Like, Whatever. I'll, but for you, Laura, I'll get right on the advanced sticker tech. You know, I got to keep my merch popping. You know, it has to be has to be high quality for Laura's standards. You know, I, I understand. I understand. Oh my god damn it. Yeah, I have no fucking merch at the moment, so some shitty stickers would were definitely I'm glad I got those regardless. Even though they like fucking wore away instantly. These are bad rat attempts. I could have definitely made it work with those first two. Yes. I had to charge that up. Oh, by the way, a special shout out actually to Ash's uh, record. Ash did some crazy movement. Ash got a, a proxy like that and very ball. You guys don't even realize this. The fucking dragon head, the, the Twilight Harbor head, it's you can only stand and charge on certain parts of that. Ash did the fucking, I thought only Hop Kid ever did this, did the fucking cheat percent fucking charge off the snout, the charge jump, which it's very easy to get a charge jump uh, dropped that way. And that was extremely ballsy to do, whoa, to do at the end of, am I gonna die? Oh my God, <laughs> at the end of a run. So yeah, a bit, a special recognition for that. That was like, that was, that was gangsta, saving like an extra second or two on a rat proxy doing that. Maybe you find it more consistent than I do. That could be the, the situation, but either way, that, that was really cool to see. Last time I saw that was from Hop Kid, like back in the day, so. Like that was definitely a standout moment. Like it's not even the rat proxy itself that blew my mind, it was just the post proxy movement. That was like insane. GG's. All right, uh, I'm going to go pee real quick. Uh, I'll let the credits play, and then uh, we'll get into another run. Be right back. Sorry I took so long. I kind of forgot about you. What about Ganasty Ganork? Nasty Nork? His toast. So BRB. now there's order again in the Dragon Kingdom? Well, mostly. I still got some treasure to pick up. What will you do next? I'd say the sky's the limit.
All right, I'm back. Uh, dare I try a few more rats? I'm not sure. I'll do a, I'll do a couple before I uh, before I get into it. What are you guys seeing? All I hear is wah wah wah. Stop crying. I don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> oh, this sounds like a nice, nice loving chat room. Can't even. Not letting me scroll through it. Weirdly, I don't know if HP is still here. I guess I can't scroll through the chat anymore. All right. Anyways. I'll do more runs here in just a sec. That was a funny proxy. And yeah, thanks uh, Junkpot for the compliment. Yeah, I was really stoked when I... When I realized that, like, um... That the fucking, uh, what's it called? Um... Those chests in Night Flight, like, they're way bigger than you than you'd think like flying past them when you really land next to them they're like fucking like three times the size of Spyro they're fucking huge Irish Eagle thank you for the five dollars says wish me luck going to ask her out today she makes me too happy and at peace to not here's to that going well into a new PB yeah good luck Irish Eagle if she says no that's okay you know don't be, be ready for the worst you know But good luck to you. I hope it does work out. Oh, yeah. I might as well try a reverse rat, right? So I got to do it like this, right? Like, do it like that. Preferably against the pillar. Is that the idea? I've seen you also do it in the corner as well, like on the portal. Let's try it there. I don't think I've gotten reverse rat at all. Is there some like nuance I'm like missing here? Oops. The word wrapped is bugged. Oh yeah, let me fix it. One sec. DSS box. Refresh it. Okay, yeah, it seems good fixed it but I was gonna say a uh, scrolling uh, just separate from what you just said a uh, scrolling up and down like using my scroll wheel on my mouse does not work there's not even like a like a bar to the right that you can scroll like I, I cannot technically look up or down in the chat you know what I'm saying there's no vertical scroll which would be nice Yeah, I, th I see. I see what you're saying, Ash. That makes sense. Let me see if I can get a. Uh... Right, here's like a, I guess you could justify this one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna ever commit to a reverse rat, but maybe I'm just missing out. There we go. Yeah. The fuck. So okay. I was saying this at the end of my last run. You can uh, do a charging. You'll notice that most of the time that uh, that people get this trick. See what happened there? How like I got the rolling animation? Like a lot of these polygons here, they incur the rolling animation. And if you're not holding X when that happens, or if you don't press X quickly enough, then you'll just roll off the side of the the dragon head. And the same thing applies on a lot of these uh, polygons as well. Like that. I think there's one like over here somewhere. No, maybe. <laughs> Look how disjoint, by the way, the collision is from the visuals. So this head is all sorts of weird. Obviously, you're not meant to, like, really be standing on it. Um, but what you can do is you can technically charge... The fastest movement is a charge jump, right? And um, for safety, you know, normally we just full hop and glide. But Ash, in their fucking world record, did this shit. Charge jumped off of that, which maybe seemed like nothing. 
but that is like just because of the angle it's at and stuff like that it's not like i would not sit here and say that that's like a 100 percent consistent thing to do you know that was like a very ballsy piece of movement that i just wanted to impress upon you guys was really fucking epic that ash did that i i would have not i would not have the balls to do that even if i was like if i needed it or whatever so that was pretty badass that ash did that But yeah, surely, I, and I think Ash would probably say this, is I think with a little bit of practice, it, it can become like a bit more viable than I'm giving it credit for. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> okay, for show HP. You good, man. How does fodder proxy work? Uh, do they get a one pixel hip? I don't know if it's the exact size of their hitbox, but all I know is that it's active. Their hitbox is active until they poof away after their death animation. Which means that if you can get between them and the corner before they poof away after you hit them, which is a very short and precise window, if you can do that, then uh, then you can squeeze between the rat's hitbox and, uh, and a wall or a corner to get a upwards, to get shot up in the air by a proxy. I hope that explains it. If that was too complicated, I can try to simplify the explanation again. What's up, Chris? And Dylan, thank you for the good lucks. And Jupe. See Sona. It's a speed run? Yeah, this is a speed run. Thanks, Falcon. Oh, okay, you'd say you're like 70% consistent when you go for that. Yeah, that's definitely higher than me. I'd probably be like less than 50. Just because I haven't practiced it at all, really. I mean, I've like looked at it a little bit and like was like, fuck this. Yeah, even for you, it definitely has potential for... Error. Yeah, GG's on that. And also, you know, since we're talking about your run, Ash, and I'll, I promise I won't be like, you know, fucking rubbing your nipples too much here or anything, but, um, you know, I, I, it was really nice to see like a, a run, uh, like, like how different that run was from the, um, from the previous uh, PB you had. That the previous PB with the nester skip and the mama would be the second try and then the second try rat like it was just like one of those paces that's just like whoa like the stock market like going up and down and up and down it was a lot cooler to see like a more solid just like uh, like um yeah, just more like solid smooth run you could say through the game not that one is like better than the other or anything it was just cool to see that that difference so yeah GG's for that as well. Oh my god. Yeah, I too have watched that uh, video. Oops, I did that wrong. Oh my god, please. <laughs> Resetting. Um, yeah, the Pan the Pan and Coex newest video that he took 10 months, by the way, to make. This is a four hour, I thought it was like three hour, yeah, like four hour long uh, video explaining every invisible wall in Super Mario 64. Imagine if someone did that in Spyro. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, that video was, was awesome. I, I really enjoyed watching it. I watched it all throughout the day when it came out, I remember. The other day. Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. There's a proxy where you jump on the things next to the balloonist. Yeah, that's called, what's the, what's the, that one called, guys? That one's called, like, boneless, right? That's another day's bag of bones, uh, coveless method. And it's thought to be one of the more consistent ones, but not as consistent as rat proxy, as back rat, we would call it. 
Uh, why do I start again? It's because in speedrunning, I think you're new to speedrunning, so I'll just like explain this as clearly as possible. So like, I'm trying to get a personal best here, which means I'm trying to beat my best time. So if I mess up in a level, like for example in Town Square on my last run, I was like really struggling with that yellow gem, if you remember. I'm at liberty uh, at any moment to be like, you know what, this run is just not fast enough for my taste, especially early on. I'd like to get a good pace going early and then, you know, and then I'd be more willing to take mistakes later. But that can vary based on how I'm feeling. And at the end of the day, it's it's my choice whether I want to like reset or not for any given reason, no matter how big or small, because the goal here is to get the, the new best run, a new personal best or a new world record even. So that's why I restarted there. I hope that's kind of a, that makes sense. So a lot of a speedrunning stream that you're going to, like, for any of you guys that are ever, ever going to watch a speedrunning stream, there's going to be a lot of unexplained resetting happening. And you have to just understand that it's like, okay, something went wrong, and, so, and they didn't want to deal with that run, so now they're doing a new one. And that's a very, like, that's just a, a very hallmark part of, of speedrun live streaming. Yeah, that is it is wild when I put it like into words like that. It's like we don't I don't even think about it, you know? It's like it's such a natural part of this hobby is resetting. And it, it is very much a balance of like, you know, if I'm just resetting over every little thing, you know, I'm never going to finish a run, which is bad. But if I'm not resetting over anything, then I'm then I'm not necessarily going to get a a, a new a, a new best time as quickly. So it's there is a uh, there's a balance to it. For, for one's own sanity. As you can imagine, it kind of drives you insane to just reset over every little human miss like this. Like, look at this. That's a reset. <laughs> you know? It's like, all right. It doesn't have to be. I could keep, I could continue and try to have like a no reset attitude. But you see, that's part of the whole like mental journey uh, aspect of what's going on here. And that's why I think a, a speedrunning stream is so interesting despite resets. Is that you really get a, especially when the, the runner has like a camera and the fucking mic, is you really get a viewpoint into their psyche. Despite like the, despite runs maybe not going amazing or whatever. Three, two, one, go. So yeah, that's like the full explanation of what's going on here. Oh, you did get boneless once with save states. GG on that, Chris. I didn't even know. Okay, that. Rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. What's up, Duminator? New viewer, be mean to him. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. About uh, someone left like a kind of kind of a critical comment on my uh, last stream, being like, "Hey, Deo, like you're too mean to new viewers." You know, people just asking innocent questions. And after some discussion with you guys earlier in the stream, I came to the conclusion that um, it's not that I that I need to change any behaviors per se, like I need to be nicer or whatever. I think I'm generally pretty, and this is me, maybe I sound a little defensive saying this, but um, I think I'm generally pretty nice and pretty accommodating to most to most questions and most viewers and most whatever. But at the same time, I am not gonna filter myself if someone's being annoying or asking question after question after question, like I'm gonna keep it 100% honest, you know, and fair for the most part. Um, and yeah, and I will be sarcastic at times, and I will poke fun at people for saying silly, saying things that I find silly, you know? And um, I think what's the most important thing for me to remember is that if I'm gonna be that, uh, have that big of a mouth, is that I just have to remind people that, n that what I say, if I'm talking shit on you and I'm telling you you're an annoying chatter or whatever, you know, I can understand where maybe you might take that kind of personally and be like a little upset and be like, damn, you know, he's being mean to me or whatever. But I want you to know that I love you. For every one of you, even the most annoying bitches ever to watch this stream, I want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you. And I'm just glad you're here. You know, even if you are like annoying me or saying some dumb shit or in my opinion or whatever, um, I'm still so glad you're here and I love you. And that's like kind of the vibe I need to make sure I end every like sort of critical like, all right, listen here, you annoying bitch. Fuck you, but thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. That's like, that's just the key. And I gotta keep, I gotta keep that, uh, that vibe going. That's kind of my takeaway from the whole, like, being critical or the whole, like, oh, Deo, you're mean sort of thing. So, yeah, that was like kind of my takeaway from that.
I'm de here's what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna pretend like people aren't annoying and not call them out for that in my chat. Uh, that's what I'm not gonna do. So like, just fair, fair, you know, I'm just being, I'm fair, you know, I'm honest, I'm fair, I say what I feel and you know, I think that's, I think that's a good quality to have as a streamer, even if, even if it makes me appear a little mean sometimes, you know, like I said, just remember that I love and appreciate you for watching, no matter who you are. Why do I choose the blue, the blue lights for stream? I just like the blue. I don't, I don't, I can't explain it. There's something gamery and um, comfy about the the cooler colored lights compared to the hot ones. I could change it. I think I have my um, my RGB remote back there. But I just like blue. I don't know. I don't really have a particular reason for it. Yeah, the blue light's comfy, you know? That's all I can really say. It's better than no light. Here, I'll try some other colors for fun. Oh, what do we got here? We got a green. See, like, green's weird. Red's super weird. No, we're going back to blue, you know? Blue is comfy. I could do purple. I'll try to find the purple button here when I enter a uh, dragon. Drag uh, uh, purple is the only other, like, I would say. It's also a cool, comfy color, so... I'll switch to purple if you guys want. How about this? Uh, uh, five subs and I switch to purple. All right. I know. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you guys don't. Now you guys. That shut you guys up real quick. No. Five subs and I switch it to purple. All right. That's that's the deal. <laughs> it's funny how people are just gonna stop talking about that now. <laughs> Any anytime it's like I do the sub ultimatum, it's like, all right, chat's like, all right, we're just gonna move on to another topic now. <laughs> Yo, K uh, Kale, thank you for one gift. <laughs> Love you, Kale. Four more to go. Who wants to help out, Kale? Come. Joop. Thank you for one. And Steve HW, we're going to count that YouTube membership as another sub. We'll, we'll count that. It's, it's the same thing. It's like the YouTube version. So we're at three out of five. We just need two more. You guys really want to see the purple lights, don't you? Oleg with the resub. Just need one more. And Cyrus. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your purple, purple lights. There you go. I know, epic. <laughs> he did it. I delivered. It's a, tell me it isn't weird, right? I know it's like pink almost, right? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's so much different than the blue. Like the blue is just like, right? Like the blue is just the vibe. I can't really explain it. This isn't bad, but it ain't blue. It's gonna work. Nope. Didn't even grab the fucking gems. Mmm, that'll work. Crazy camera. I'll continue this to the end of the split and see how I feel. This is going to lose some time to PB, but not that much. Yo, fucking GG on that, Penjis. The fucking universe RNG in your favor there. Stays pink until I take world record? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing to commit to that. I don't know if I'm too sensitive to put any pressure on myself at all as far as world records concerned. I feel like that's the antithesis of my of what's been keeping me going this whole time. Is being like, we can get record, but it's okay if we don't. I feel like if I put pressure on myself like that, I'll start I'll start losing my mind. I can't just have fun and do a silly little challenge like that. I'm probably gonna reset this. 
without it getting all without all these emotional implications, right? What a what a baby. Plus eight. I mean, I could keep going. I think I'm gonna reset this though. If that happens again, I'll keep going. Yeah, I'll leave the purple for the rest of the stream though. The pink. It's so real, Ash, isn't it? Like. You know, I don't even have to say it. Like, you already know what I'm talking about. You already, you get it. You, you know my, my vibes. My, my trying to be all fucking, take the ego out of it. Take all the outside, external, you know, motivation out of it. Just let it be an internal journey. Whether it takes you to world record or not, it's like not even relevant at that point. You gotta be so fucking Buddhist to not lose your mind in this fucking hobby like that. Especially playing at a high level like this. Dude, Ash got 837s uh, in two days. I think you're talking about during the... Um, during the... Whatever it is. The GSA event. Like, even just getting four 37s in one day, that's like so fucking dope. I got two 37s yesterday. I was really proud of that. At the same time, I'll say from the runner's perspective, it can at times feel like, okay, well, you know, I'm just getting lucky with the rats, but my paces aren't necessarily like that amazing. I'm not going to speak for Ash on that, but uh, in my case, it's like, you really can't go off of the end time in this category is, is what it feels like. By the way, Raz, thank you for the gift. I see that. Appreciate it. And Cyrus as well. I don't know if I shouted that out earlier. Try that again. But I really, I honestly really think I've settled into this grind in a way that's like gonna give me my best chances, I think, at, a, at PB. To where I'm like not afraid to no reset, but at the same time, I'm also not afraid to reset. It, it's like a real fear conquering thing, I feel like. It's, it's like, am I afraid to sit here and just reset a bunch, you know? It's like, no, not right now. Uh. Okay, rolling. Excuse me. Oh, it's been peaceful. Whatever, it's not that deep. Enjoyed my commentary video? Oh, thank you for checking that out, one of those out. I have, I have many Spyro speedrun commentary related videos. So thanks for checking out any one of those. I was definitely, I'll say this on the topic of like uh, comparing yourself to others and ego and stuff like that. I was definitely struggling with like some ego stuff this morning with what with that uh, YouTube comment I mentioned about me being mean as well as just seeing other people um, just playing on the you know on my twitch following page it like kind of stressed me out I think my favorite runs to watch this is like kind of how it is for me is my favorite runners to watch are actually people that don't play the same game as me they're actually like people like Garish Goblin who plays a uh, Halo legendary or uh, or Tyrion that's playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas because these are people that have, like, really nothing to do with Spyro speedrunning. And so it's like, in my mind, it's like, I can watch them and just chill in the chat. And I can just, I can be an actual viewer, I feel like. Like, I'm not some speedrunner guy, and like, if I were to say good luck in Saboon's chat, for example, it's like, oh, hey, Dale, welcome, you know? And then, like, everything I watch, it's like, I'm expecting him to do certain things, and like, I'm really comparing and contrasting. Like, I'm really studying, you know, anytime I'm watching someone playing one of these games. So it's hard for me to take that step back and just appreciate speedrunning as a viewer. And not as like a, you know, oh, I should do that strat, or oh, let me pick that, or oh, hold on, how do they do this section, and oh, you know, everybody say, oh, I sh should I say good luck? What are they gonna think if I say this in the chat? You know, it's like, what are the implications of, there's like so many more implications there, you know, in my mind. Obviously, I probably make it out to be much more than it is, but that's just the nature of it. It's Mies Jack, thank you for the tier one, man. 36 months, that's three years right there. Thank you so much for that. Can, I don't, I'm not sure if that gets you a new badge. I don't think it does, but big shouts to Ismies for that. Love you, man. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. I did tell you, Dylan, that I would race you in San Andreas one day. That was a long time ago we said that. One day. We need a 36-month badge. I mean, if you guys want to make it for me, like, go ahead. I don't think we need anything, to be honest with you. We have a four-year badge. Yeah, I keep missing that town square jump. I personally, this might be a hot take for a Twitch streamer, but I feel like I have plenty of emotes, plenty of sub badges, plenty of alerts, plenty of this, plenty of that. I don't need a sub goal anything. I don't need to, all I need to do is just play the game and just, just you know, focus and have fun, you know? I got plenty of, you know, got plenty of balls in my mouth, you know? Okay, rolling. Oh, it's been peaceful. Which strats will I practice today? Well, usually I do my practice before runs, uh, Dowie. Um, and today I did Ice Cavern. Uh, I looked at the early thief in Town Square. And, um, some other stuff that I forgot. <laughs> You've been playing the new game Grounded, it's so dope. That's the name of the game, Grounded. Never heard of it. Dude, I thought for sure that roll was coming out. I like took my hands off the controller and everything. That was not good. Ooh, I got, that's like the rare, oh my God, I got the rare gem there. I don't think I've ever gotten that in a run before. Not, especially not the least without a uh, without rolling. That's like probably the first. That probably just made up my time loss there. Maybe a little. Probably not. Interesting Stone Hill. <laughs> Sorry, I had to stretch there. Nothing like a good stretch mid run. How long have I been a speedrunner? I've been speedrunning since, uh, basically since 2013. I've been, I've learned, that's when I first learned to speedrun this game. But, uh, my first saved run on my Twitch channel is from, uh, late 2014. So yeah, I've basically been speedrunning for over a decade. And streaming every run as well. Speedrunning and streaming are like one and the same to me. I don't do offline runs. You found the tree tops strat. You talking about the beginning of tree tops? You know, Ash does a, a faster strat that loses gems compared to what Laura and myself do. Uh, and especially considering um, this is like one of those uh, contexts of the rest of the run things that like really influences my decision for not doing a faster start in tree tops. Which I don't know if that's what you're referring to, but I'm just going to talk about that. Um, is that you do save like two ish seconds for going faster there? But um, the cost of gems, especially after Misty Bog, where you're already going to be burning gems and, you know, you're pretty much going to be at like a not amazing gem count, no matter what way you slice it going into treetops. In my case, at least, is that um, it makes it not worth to uh, to sacrifice gems there for a couple seconds. Now, if I was more on top of my gem count and I knew that I had an X amount, like, I'm not exactly super on top of my gem count coming out of Misty Bog. I just kind of know what I have going into it and what I can burn. But I don't really have the total counts, like, super, like, dialed in math. I don't have the arithmetic super dialed in to where I'm going to start making, like, judgment calls based on my total gem count for just for the start of treetops. I'd rather just keep it consistently, like, what I do. And, you know, worst case scenario, I have a couple extra gems and then my jock gets faster. You know, that's it's kind of that sort of thing. Or I can do like some shit in Metalhead or whatever. I 
But there was another strat in uh, treetops that I was exploring yesterday as well, which is um, after the dragon, you can go through the fence to save like a second, maybe a second and a half. Um, but, you know, for a second and a half, a trick that doesn't really work like all the time, or that's not like the most super consistent thing for me, especially with the boxes being right in front of it. If those boxes weren't there, I think it'd be easier to justify, but because there's boxes right in front of it, the, um, they'll push you back and affect your momentum, and you need to have max charge speed in order to do that trick. So it just ends up being like, in practice, maybe you could get it somewhat consistent without the boxes there, but with the boxes, it's kind of like, ooh, it just it just makes something that like is already kind of sketchy, like more sketchy. And it's just, it's, it's hard to justify, but it is doable. I mean, I, I think like anyone who really committed to it could definitely get it. Kind of like, um, kind of like the Dreamweavers flop in that way. That was a really stupid movement. Where it's like, it's just the risk. It is cool and it is a time save, but it's like it's hard to justify the risk to reward ratio of it. No matter how much you practice. But that's just in my case. Maybe for someone else, they don't, you know, it is a justified risk reward for them. Because you got to remember that with risk reward, when it comes to picking strats in a speedrun, it's not always about um, just doing the fastest thing. It's sometimes you do a strategy just because you think it's cool or you think it's fun or it's swag or whatever. And both of those strats that I mentioned, the flop in Dreamweavers and the through the fence in Treetops are definitely swag strats for sure. So that, that could be a motivating factor for someone to commit to them, even if they, you know, lose some time to them on, you know, half their runs or whatever. What do I mean about the gems in Misty Bog? If I enter Misty Bog over gemmed, then I can essentially skip a lot of gems there and save a lot of time. That's my dedicated level where I really like burn a lot of gems in this route if I'm over gemmed. And what I mean is I'm just skipping gems to save time. And so since I since I basically commit to a to a gem burn misty bog when I'm over gemmed and a thorough misty bog when I'm under gem, it leaves me in a scenario where like I don't really want to be burning more gems in in uh, treetops. That's what I was that's what I was saying earlier. I hope that explains it. These splits that I'm running against had a pretty solid bog. Uh, there is a few more seconds to eke out in it for sure. Like I was on a really good gem count last run. Like I could have probably eked out another two to four seconds of that level, but, you know, just is what it is. Bog and Metalhead are definitely levels where um, it, you want to be over gemmed going into them in order to really save the most time. Show feet unironically, no thanks. What's up, Ricky? Good to see you, bud. All right, in the green. Yeah, they bribed me to change the webcam color today. I hope you guys like it. It's supposed to be purple, but whatever. Hot pink it is. <laughs> Oops, that was a gold, by the way, I think. Not good. Oh, thank you, Meow. Welcome, welcome. Almost fell off there. Yeah, thank you, Nenka and King of Funk for the good vibes in the YouTube chat. Love you guys. Let's 
Let's see if we can hold on to this green here. We're still doing okay on gems. I did drop a 10 in Shemp, but if we play, you know, we play solidly through the end of Peacekeepers and Magic Crafters, that shouldn't matter. If we do that. Your deposition just ended. Oh yeah, because I think you were mentioning this yesterday. You like work in law, right? It wasn't like your court case per se. It was like something you were working on. So yeah. Thank you for entertaining. I'm glad, uh, glad I was able to keep your attention. Match the webcam with... Match the lights with... Dude, you know, that would be cool. Like, if, like, the lights could respond to, like, the... The predominant color palette on screen. Like, from the game. Like, if I could hook the light up to my computer and it, like, reads... It, it's, like, looking at the game and changes the light accordingly. That would be really cool. Probably have to buy a new light for that. But... Surely some technology like that exists, right? Does anyone know? Any RGB light enthusiasts in the chat? I know they make RGB, when I was messing with, um, like, building computers and stuff, I know they make, like, RGB lights for, like, computer fans and, like, for the case and stuff that you plug them into your motherboard and then, like, based on the music you're playing, they'll, like, pulsate and stuff. But I don't know if there's any such technology where it, like, it looks at the screen and, like, matches, like, you know, changing colors on screen. So if that, if such technology exists, feel free to let me know. What's up, Bomb Buns? Govi has something like that? The Amber Light? You guys are saying Ambi Light? Yeah, if I could just like choose a section of like my desktop screen, like my OBS window, you know? Or just like, you know, just select just the game capture and then plug the lights into my computer and have the whatever the predominant color is on screen for my game capture be the light behind me. That would be really cool. You guys are saying Ambilight? If you guys got any brand recommendations, feel free to like post them in my Discord or something. Any like Amazon links or whatever. Auto hotkey. Auto ho I've used auto hotkey. It's like that's like a basic um macro program, I thought. I didn't know it had anything it did anything with lights. Like, I'm not looking for something that I have to, like, program myself, you know, like, to just full disclosure. <laughs> like, something, something consumer-friendly, please. Like, in a very serious, like, you know, something realistic. I know some of you Linux users out there are like, oh, that's easy if you just, you know, fucking build your own program, you know, type of thing. But, like, you know, try to, try to keep it realistic for me with the recommendations here. My type exclamation point discord in the uh, chat to find my discord. Thanks for uh, any recommendations you guys might have. I'd be totally willing to spend like a hundred bucks or whatever on a light that changes with the color of my game. That'd be really cool. This is the rub. I have been known to rub a few things in my day. Did I PB? I PB'd a few days ago, yeah. Not recently. Not like super recently. I 
I'm pink. Yes, I am. Just for you, Bex. <laughs> How do you manipulate the guy on skis next to the poles at the end of Ice Cavern to be in front of you? Hold on. Oh, you have to rub up against the wall as you approach that area. That's the trick to that. I was struggling with that as well recently. A little slow there. Interesting, Drick. Yeah, po post the name of that signal RGB. Post that in my Discord. Post all brand recommendations for for screen adaptive lights uh, in my Discord. Thank you. You can just post them in like the general channel or whatever, and then I'll I'll look into it later. Hey nuts, welcome, welcome. Oops, it's fine. I'm gonna play it safe here though. So I'm not trusting this. Yeah, good thing. I would have taken damage there if I'd have played that movement ballsy. Not the best cycle, but it's fine. Been getting unlucky with that cycle lately. I don't know if it's me or what. If the dominant color is black or dark gray, dude, I don't know. I mean, like, the, they would turn black. <laughs> Just a bright black light, you know? That's like, that's a real thing, right? They'd probably dim, I guess, in that case. Like, ideally speaking. Or maybe have like a white light, you know, in place. I don't fucking know, dude. You say it like I'm the one making this technology. Just a nice bright black light. <laughs> you know, it makes sense to me. <laughs> Just shine a black light. Yeah, they, a black light is a real thing, but funny enough, black lights are, what are they, like purple, right? Because they're supposed to show, like, things in the dark or whatever. But no, I'm not talking about a black light. I'm talking about literally the color black on a light. Why? Why isn't it possible? <laughs> you, it's just not possible. Why, you stupid motherfucker? Is that not possible? <laughs> Fucking American Psycho. Why not? We missed the blue. I'm kind of bleeding some gems here, not a crazy amount. Definitely doing better on the gem counts um, on this run than I was yesterday. Or just in general today than I was yesterday. Let's see if I don't get trolled here though. Okay, no. We're good. Those wizards can just die and not give you the gem sometimes. Because of stupid hit boxes. Hurt boxes rather. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Great to see you as always. 
probably lose in a couple seconds because the thief, yeah. And a couple gems as well, but nothing crazy. Tier three, one month. Did I miss one? I'm not seeing anything on my on my feed. But thank you to anyone who did just sub. No, okay. Yeah, speaking of tier threes, um, the tier three game night is this Saturday. To those of you guys who are tier 3, make sure you're joined in my Discord and that your user settings have your Twitch account linked to Discord. So that way you can join in. For those of you guys, I know some of you guys are tier 3s and tried doing that and it's still not working. Like you still can't see the private channels on my Discord. Um, just send me a DM and I can add you it. I can add, I can give you like an emergency role, emergency tier 3 role if I really need to. But make sure you, you try doing the process normally first. What's up, Nenka? You're thinking about doing any percent? You saw Hypnoshark did a run uh, and didn't do any crazy strats and got a decent time. Oh, no. Yeah, I think that's a common misconception, actually, Nenka. It's like people like watch like, you know, most of the people who are grinding Spire speedruns, they're generally going to be pretty like adept, I would say, you know, like not all of them. But, you know, a lot of us that are actively online that you're going to see are going to be pretty high level players. And um, it's an entirely different experience when you're just playing it chill, playing it safe with a real baby route and just doing, playing the game at your own pace. You can get great times that way, you know? It's it's really, there's something to be said for just playing it chill and playing it safe and just having fun with it, you know? And not getting all hardcore about the gem counts and the specific routing and all that. But yeah, no, definitely, uh, definitely make it easier for, for yourself and have fun with it for sure. So that's definitely what I, every time I recommend like for new players, I recommend doing run like doing blind several blind runs before really learning like a serious route. And then once you do learn a route, just learn it very like generally it doesn't like and really try to cut out things that are going to stop you up and like get you stuck and things like that. You know, you got to find your own path, you know, to start. And then once you, you know, really knock out a few runs and you feel ready, then you can start like, like really copying, like, like note for note what upper, what uh, higher level players are doing. But it's really not this whole journey. It's not about going as fast as you can immediately getting as getting better as quickly as possible and immediately implementing like as hard of strats or as whatever you can handle type deal, you know, there is really something to be said, especially in this game for just taking it slow playing you know speed run and just put turn on a timer and just do a playthrough of the game you know and then see how it went and then maybe try you know look back on your run and be like eh, i did this wrong let me try this different next time and just go through that process you know for, for yourself first before really committing to like being a fucking super extra you know fucking optimization pilled ass gamer like me you know you don't want to be as far gone as me when you're starting out it's it's really not in your best interest believe it or not you might think like, oh, I might as well learn the hard stuff now and learn all the route and things like that. But you're really just diluting your own experience with, if you're not, if you really aren't ready for that. Which I don't think any real like brand new speedrunner is going to be enjoying that process. To do it so dryly and, and bluntly and copycat, you know. Those are steps that needed to be taken if you're really trying to play the game at the highest level. But I mean, you know, you're not going to be there in your first month. You're not going to get there in your first couple months. Like, give yourself that chance to suck and just have fun, you know? That's always what I say when it comes to new speedrunners. Don't really, don't just watch me. Don't just think that the way I do it is it's my way or the highway, you know? Find your suck, you know? <laughs> Embrace the suck. And just cruise through the game at your own pace. Do whatever strategies work for you and, you know? Maybe even learn off if you want to like really learn from someone else's runs. Instead of watching mine, you can watch like someone who's like way lower on the leaderboards, like uh, Hypnoshark, right? Like Hypnoshark's still good at speedrunning, but you know, he obviously is going to do a lot safer stuff than me. I'm sure Hypno would say the same thing. 
for CTR when you're first learning, like watch just like a basic ass. No, no, no. Oh, that was so close. I turned right too hard. Oh man. <laughs> rookie mistake. That was a rookie mistake right there. How many gems did I have anyways? Uh, well, I guess I don't know now. Get me out of there. <laughs> Fiddlesticks. Yeah. Dude, you gotta embrace this. I'm telling you guys. What? You think I'm not embracing this? Oh. Oh, that was so bad. I'm just, I'm done. I'm so upset. Now I'm done for today. Dog, I have to embrace the suck too. You know, that's a skill that you get started on early in this, in this hobby, regardless of whatever, however you approach the game. Embracing the suck should be your number one priority when you're starting out. Or it should be one of your, maybe not your number one priority, but one of your priorities, mentality wise, all throughout your speedrunning journey. If I can't take a, a dead potential world record like that on the chin, I have no chance. Think about that. In the same way, if you can't take fucking dying 10 minutes in a row on a flight level when you're just starting out, you can't be realistic with yourself. You can't take that on the chin, then, you know. You gotta be able to take the, you gotta embrace the suck. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, dude, I mean, look at a Ash. Ash is great at sucking. Okay, rolling. Oh. Oh. I'll stop. We, we all suck in our own ways, all right? No matter how literally you want to put that. I'm going to stop before I get in trouble here. Missing a gem in loot, last room. Any, think about that. Any fucking person that you, like, I would say any person in the top five, and maybe top 10 or 20, but at least in the top five, 120% runs, each one of those people, myself included, has been on a PB, perhaps even world record pace, and has missed a gem at the end of an hour and a half long, you know, whatever, journey of ups and downs and everything and had it all go to shit because you missed one gem in the last room. It's happened to every single one of us. And shit like that will really make you question your, your sanity because it's like, man, I put in all this work and it's for nothing. And you got to find the cope where it's not for nothing. That's like the true key to, to happiness with this. Is once you start feeling like your runs, like just because something resets or something went badly, that oh, that was that was so pointless. My entire uh, X amount of time I spent on that run is now pointless because I reset. If you're looking at it that way, you're gonna burn out. You're just not gonna, you're just not gonna get anything out of speedrunning. If you make it in your heads so that you only get something out of speedrunning when you finish PB runs, then that means you only get something out of speedrunning less than one percent of the time. Like think about that. If you're a new player, maybe it's more than that, but it, eventually it will get to a point where less than 1% of the time, you PB, you know, of the time spent playing. So is all ni other 98% of that pointless? I don't think so. I find a lot of like coping strategies to where it's like, I feel like I'm growing as a person just chatting with you guys and going through this shit. That's why I like streaming and speedrunning. It helps me feel like I'm, that there's something of value happening here beyond just the run itself. Another cope is that it's like good practice or whatever. You know, there's a lot of ways of looking at it. Anyways, just thoughts about uh, sucking and making that meaningful. Love the vibe today. Thank you. I 
I knew you would like. Yeah, I knew it, Laura. I knew the moment I was like, "Don't get the hot dog crust." I was like, "Dude, she's gonna, she's actually gonna love it." <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that shit. Hey, no, I mean, dude. Fucking real shit. I admire you for that honesty. Yeah, it's like, if you can say this is disgusting and stupid and crazy, but I love it, like, pff, that's fucking legit. She'll say she likes things to spite me. Oh, is it is it that deep? Is, are there mind games happening here? I don't even realize. She, she actually just threw the pizza away, but she's like pretending like she loves it in my chat. Oh, fuck. Green apple. McDonald's had a green apple. I know they had the shamrock shake, but that's like mint, I thought. Green apple shake, huh? I'd go for like a, a sour green apple slushy, but not a shake, because that has like milk in it. I don't like sour plus milk, you know? Unless we're talking about buttermilk pancakes, which is... Which, that's different. It was a Euro exclusive thing? Oh, I see. Right next to the Donkin deals. Fear. I've never had that. Is that true? True. I've never tried a shamrock shake. They say they're just overpriced. Like, I'll just make a shake at home, dude. It's easier. Same thing with like margarita going out and getting margaritas. I fucking love margaritas, but it's like for 10 bucks, like I'll just make it at home. I'll just buy a fucking handle of tequila and just make it myself, you know? For the price of two margaritas, I can buy all the ingredients to make, like, fucking, like, ten margaritas. Ugh. Come on. Dude, that wasn't even close. Let me just practice this. I'm gonna reset. If that first flame had hit, I think it would have worked. Yeah, there we go. You're off to bed. Have a good night, Ink. Kefir is similar to buttermilk, but thicker, but you just drink it. I would not like that. I don't like drinking straight, like, milk products. Three, two, one, go. I The closest thing I'll do to that is, like, I'll drink, like, eggnog during the holidays. Do they have eggnog in other parts of the world? Is that just an American thing? Eggnog is good. But really, I, I equate it to this. Eggnog is literally, it just tastes like melted French vanilla ice cream. So, <laughs> I mean, if you like melted, the taste of melted ice cream, then you would love eggnog. Oh, you guys do have it. Nice. But yeah, I'm not like the type of guy to like chug milk out of the fridge or whatever. So, I feel like kefir wouldn't really be my thing. I do like, um,. A creamy, milky product that I like, uh, rice pudding. Even though it doesn't really have milk in it, I don't think. But rice pudding is really good. It has, what is it? It has, um, rice milk. Or what? Dude, I'm pressing the fucking L1 button and Spyro's just not reacting. 
You're saying egg, you're saying eggnog does not taste like melted French vanilla ice cream? I mean, to each their own. I mean, that's just how it tasted to me when I had it. I mean, doesn't ice cream have eggs in it? Am I tripping about that? Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not. I'm clearly not an expert on dairy products. So what do I know? That's like dating French vanilla tastes like eggs. It has no eggs. I mean, why, why are eggs like... Oh, you're saying eggnog tastes like eggs is what you're saying. I never got that impression. I, I, I understand that eggnog has eggs in it, but it doesn't like taste like eggs to me. In fact, eggs in their just their raw, uncooked form, they don't really taste like anything as far as I can tell. Eggs only taste like something when you like cook them. For me. I mean, maybe I'm like really ruffling some jimmies here with these opinions. I didn't realize that you took it that serious, Falcon. So I, I will concede that you have the correct opinion on this matter. But yeah, eggnog does not taste like eggs to me. It tastes like melted French vanilla ice cream. Whoop. Yeah, I don't consume a lot of raw egg, so I, I can't really say I'm an expert on this either. Cream eggs? You're talking about like the, the Cadbury cream eggs, like the little candy chocolate things? Um, I, you can find them in certain places in America, but they're not common. Three, two, one, go. Who's my favorite dragon? Um, probably your mother. No, I don't really care about the dragon personalities in this game. Okay, rolling. Oh, I like a Cyprin. He's the one that lays on his side when you rescue him in uh, Terrace Village. That dude's just chilling hard body. So I'm gonna I'm pick Cyprin on this particular day. Team, let's get this PB. I say Dale plays the game and we watch and give complex routing suggestions. <laughs> yes, yeah, only the most helpful reroute ideas that I'm not able to fully process or weigh in on. Only the most distracting complex route suggestions, please. You're not a fan of the high pitch. Thank you for releasing me. Thank you for releasing me. Like that shit. You don't like that? You don't like the sound of someone pretending to be an old man? I thought you loved old men. I thought you loved old women. That's what I thought. I thought you, I thought you liked them 80 plus. I thought that voice was right up your alley. Yeah, ask me about the validity of Nestor Skip and why I don't go for it. That, that'll be sure to, uh, you know, not distract me at all. Yeah, some of the old person dragons are funny. I definitely don't hate them. You had a raw egg in your kimchi noodles. Your body wasn't used to it. Felt weird. Yeah. I mean, that's just the thing with, like, the Western palate, like, it's hard to handle slimy, you know, like, cracking a raw egg into a fucking ramen, you know, and it's, like, just that sliminess from it. It's like, ooh, I don't know. It's... Can't do it. It's, it's hard. It's hard for my palate to, to appreciate that texture. Have I considered getting last place on the speedrun leaderboard? Uh, nope. Ahitama? What is that? You eat cookie dough? Just straight up. I like cookie dough ice cream. I think that's like the perfect amount of cookie dough. It's like the little 
globules that they put into like ice cream. <laughs> I like that suggestion, neat. Good plan. Yeah, shaken egg whites like used um like I, I would co I would consider that like processed egg white, you know? Like if you shake it up into a beverage to foam it, or if you like really beat it up and get like the stiff peaks and stuff, like for a meringue. That's like at that point it's like not even like really like eggs anymore, you know? But just to have just straight up just raw egg white and that's it, like not processed in any way. It is a little odd. It's got that sliminess, you know? But I don't mind, like, cooked egg white. Like, I'll, I'll fucking eat, like, egg whites, like... You can ask, actually, for egg whites at McDo uh, at where? At, like, Denny's. I, it, I think they upcharge for it now, but it used to be at certain, like, breakfast chains, you can just get, like, egg whites instead of just scrambled eggs. Those are fine for me. I don't really have a preference. Cooked, that is. And and similarly, I don't mind like um like a little bit of egg white like in a whatever, like you said, like a whiskey sour or in my case, like I've had like pisco sours, you shake it up with a little bit of egg white to foam. That stuff is fine. Soft-boiled egg is the real strat with ramen. Yeah, I respect that. You're full of wieners. <laughs> Love to hear it. Was it like what? <laughs> Someone was joking earlier. It was like, was it like l one long, like 50-inch wiener that went through the whole crust? Or was it just a bunch of tiny little chodes? Oh, fuck. They were separate wieners. Imagine if it was just a big fucking long fuck. Long dong silvers. I like omelets. I'm kind of with you on that, though. It's kind of like a lot of egg, you know, but I don't mind an omelet. Three, two, one, go. For breakfast every day, I always have a uh, fried egg sandwich. So two uh, eggs cooked over hard, that is like seared all the way on both sides. And um, two pieces of toast and a bunch of veggies and balsamic vinegar, basically, and uh, avocado. That's pretty much my breakfast every day. Yeah, every day I do that. Every single day. I don't get tired of it. Congrats on 7030. You talking to me? Thank you. you got, oh, nice. You got the 6040. Congrats on that. That's huge. That is huge. Congrats on not bald. No, I am bald. I am balding. Make no mistake about that. Yeah, I'm so glad I grinded out those tier threes earlier. I mean, you know, that you guys helped me. It helped, you know, reciprocate the tier three grind. I should thank you guys for that. It's cool to see that there still are tier threes hanging out and that I have a, a higher sub cut because of them and all that across the board. I really feel like now, like in my journey in streaming, like I don't have to worry about like, okay, like, do I have enough subs this month? Like, even if I go down to, like, 600 subs or whatever, like, I'll always be above, like, seven, eight, nine hundred sub points just because of the tier threes, as long as we, you know, as long as they keep up. Which I'm, like, delightfully surprised that they have. True, uh, true, truly dedicated homies. 
It gives, it gives me a, a real nice buffer that I don't have to feel like I have to like sub goal all the time and shit. Just to get by for the month. Also running ads helps a lot too. With that feeling. I just don't have to shill as much. It's just nice. It's not like I'm making like a shit ton more. It's just that I don't have to be like as worried about it. From like a full time perspective. Really nice peace of mind. Shot some cards, nice. I, I don't know what that means. Like a like at a shooting range, you mean? Or you mean like you're one of those magicians that throws cards, you throw them so hard that you equate them to like the speed of a bullet. Thus you're like, yeah, I shot those cards out of my fingers. Like a fucking superhero. A little slow. Yeah, cards start. That did not clarify at all for me, but cool. Proud of you. Keep up the cards tossing. Runny, silky yolk is the best part of eggs, uh, Dylan says. You know, I... That's the opinion I hear of, of egg connoisseurs, is that you want your eggs to be on the undercooked side because that's where the flavor is. I have yet to really have an egg experience where that is true for me. I'm trying to, like, elevate my perspective. I'm trying to, like, kind of undercook scrambled eggs or maybe leave the middle a little soft on like a fried egg or whatever but it just doesn't like i'm just not getting the any of the benefits that you guys are like that the egg that the soft egg lovers you know tout i mean i just i don't like the the sliminess of runny yolk i don't really feel like it adds flavor but may, maybe i'm just missing something maybe I, my palate is just dumb maybe i'm just dumb I'm trying, because that's like a really common opinion is that like, like less cooked eggs taste better. I feel like that's a common opinion. But I just, I, I'm trying to see it and I just don't see it. So it, that's the hard part about trying to elevate like, you know, your palate or whatever is that it's just, it takes a lot of failed attempts before you really like understand where someone's coming from with certain tastes. Yeah, Joshy, we we have an outsider opinion for that, so that's why it's like, it's like I want to understand the majority opinion. I just I can't. Like it's the same thing with raw tomato. Like I'll try to season raw tomato and put it on a burger, and it's like, this does not make the burger taste better. Like damn, like what the fuck? What am I missing here? I feel like I'm like missing like the Da Vinci Code. I'm like missing some puzzle piece, you know. But you gotta just that's how it is. You just gotta keep trying it. You just gotta keep. Keep fucking throwing your dick at the wall until one day you've like tried something a million times and it's like, oh, now I get it. That's just how it is with food. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. Acquiring a taste, so to speak, for things. Damn, that was close too. Because at least from my perspective, like, most of the time when people are, like, say they don't like something that I like, my my initial reaction to that is going to be like, oh, well, maybe you should just try it, like, a different way or or just keep trying it, you know? And then you'll, you'll see what I see. But the same thing goes the other way around, where if I don't like something, I have to, like, eat those words, so to speak, you know, and, and uh, 
try to try to keep finding even if i try and fail you have to keep trying and trying stuff until like you eventually understand where that majority opinion is coming from even if you don't agree with it you like you want to just be able to understand the perspective you know hands on but yeah i still have yet to be enlightened in that way with eggs and raw tomato I'm not saying I won't eat them. I mean, that's what I'm saying is like, I have an open mind. I'll try them. But it's always a challenge. All right. Well, losing time. I'm just going to continue for now because I've been resetting a lot. What's up, Hypno? Thank you for the good luck. Hope uh, Sonic went good today. Give me this fucking... Dude, someone was just in my chat earlier, Hypno, saying like that they saw you do a spiral run and now they're inspired. Isn't that cool? They love you. You hate sushi till you got stoned and ate 10 plates in one. I don't think getting stoned is going to help in my case. I'm already a mega stoner. Space Lazzy, thank you for the gift. Appreciate you, Lazzy. Refresh my chat here. <laughs> Dude. Do, 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 do. Whoa. My chat just freaked out there. Yeah, I got a bunch of sometimes the the my the way my chat is set up, sometimes the YouTube chat just like drops like a bomb of messages like at once. You gotta play the games that you go autopilot on when you're stoned. Yeah. I'm kind of like that with RuneScape, I guess. I could autopilot, like, speedrunning. In a sense, I am auto, you know, I mean, like, using muscle memory and stuff. But I find that this hobby, that speedrunning is the best when you're actively focused on your gameplay. That's just me. No, oh, thanks, Duck. Thanks for the good luck, Jack. Yeah, it is a little delayed with the YouTube chat. It's as good as I can make it, so bear with me. I am going to turn down the brightness here a little bit. My camera. There we go. It's because the sun came out. Am I a stare at my food in the microwave? I'm the type of guy that smokes weed and actually does not eat. I, I smoke weed as a as a hunger suppressant, actually. I know that sounds weird, but I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm a special snowflake like that. Akari, thank you for the raid. Doo, 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 doo. Thank you for the uh, raid, Akari. Little cute dragos, little dragity drags in the chat. Good to see y'all. Cute VTuber bitches. I'm a VTuber. This isn't my real... What you're seeing in the webcam is not my real human self. This is my... 
This is a, this is an artistic rendering of what I think the ideal male looks like. Yeah, the ideal form. <laughs> Balding, shirtless, <laughs> kind of fat. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you guys like my VTuber model. Yeah, Akari, I've been uh, I've been lurking in the stream lately. I've been enjoying the random ass shit you've been doing. All right, still a bit behind here. I mean, this run isn't dead. It's just not good. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm not expecting a PB here or anything. But I have been resetting a lot, and we did just get a little raid, so let's see how long, how far we can take this... this nightmare of a speedrun. I'm not expecting any, uh, you know, world records or anything. But that's alright. Just fucking play and have a good time, I guess. But yeah, if things do keep going south, like if I have a fucking massive time loss, I'll probably reset. Let's see if we- let's see if that doesn't happen here. Let's see if we can keep it together. No, I fucked up. You're not supposed to charge jump there. Big mistake. Big mistake. La 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 la. Shout out to Becky. Hi Becky. Becky's a whore. I hope that was a good enough shout out. Missing that blue for sure. I'm missing that blue. This is looking really bad. The gems missed here. Bad Alpine. I mean, good pace, but just bad collection. I get the backup thief in Wizard Peak. Type Wizard fuck when I get into Wizard Peak. What's up, Victor? Love to see a good Drago raid. Drago. I'm gonna grab these guys. A little slow. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Becky's your girlfriend. Hello once again, Becky, from the future. She's still a hoe. But that's alright, because so is everybody else here in this goddamn chat.
walk it instead of jumping. The jump is just risky. Unless I can get it out really early. everything. Found the hardest part in this game is the ledge jump at the end of Metalhead in the room with the exit. I have to take a moment and process uh, to know what part of you're talking about. The ledge jump at the end of Metalhead in the room with the exit. Ledge jump in the... I'm sorry, I, I don't think I know what you're talking about. I wish I did. If you want to try to continue explaining that, feel free. I need to grab this thief. The final room? Okay, the final room of Metalhead, like where the vortex is, basically. You're talking about jumping from, um, when you're upstairs, when you go up the vortex in that room, trying to get to the other side. You're talking about that jump? What you need to do is learn, I'm sorry to inform you this, but what you need to do is learn how to charge glide. If you're not familiar with that concept, check out a video I made called, um, or, or you, I mean, you don't have to do any of this. This is just would help you. You know, you take it or leave it, obviously, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do this shit. But um, I have a video called uh, Three Secret Strategies That Every Spiral Player Should Know. That video would help you there. But, you know, like, again, like, just do, do your thing. I mean, don't feel like you have to play the game a certain way or whatever. But, yeah, that, that glide is almost impossible to make without, uh, without really stretching the mechanics of this game. You know, just doing it casually, so to speak. Yeah, it is like a really out of place. You're, you're not like crazy for thinking that that jump is really hard to get to the box and the few red gems there. You definitely need to stretch. It can be done without a charge glide. It's just, um, you know, learning how to conserve momentum off the edge, jumping at the last possible moment, charge gliding effectively at the top of your jump and charging out of the glide onto the ledge. These are concepts that will trivialize a jump like that. But, you know, just food for thought. It's all good. Like I said, you can get it without doing any of that fancy shit. You just bash your head at it enough. Does it work in- does charge gliding work in Spyro 3, you're asking? You can charge glide in Spyro 3, but it doesn't, uh, help you with, um, distance or height in your glide. His charges send you straight down in Spyro 3 in midair. Whereas in this game, they send you horizontally forward. Oh, so close. Almost had the super duper cycle there. Treetops is a difficult level because you forget how to speed run to the aisle. Yeah, I know. It's like you always have to like sort of relearn whatever strategy. It always feels like you have to just kind of come up with your own strategy there, right? To get to that island. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'm not going to bore you with, by giving suggestions unless you'd really like that.
Flawless, thank you for the tier one. Appreciate it. If I could have a beer with any Spyro 1 boss, uh, I don't know, probably Shemp. Nah, Shemp's kind of scary, actually. I mean, probably Shemp. Shemp is like the most appropriate boss to have a beer with, I guess. But I think uh, one of the more interesting bosses is um, Blowhard. I don't know if I'd have a beer with Blowhard, but I mean, just an interesting boss. Metalhead, what other ones? Toasty. <laughs> if Toasty can stay in the fucking... Uh, in the, you know, stilt costume form, then I'd have a beer with good old pumpkin head. <laughs> yeah, Toasty would like a beer. Yeah, let's, let's hook him up. Ugh. I don't know about this gem count. We'll see. It's like almost alright. I'm expecting like 70s or 80s on the total gem count. What do we got? Oh, nice. Dude, my gem counts have been really good today, actually. I'm doing a lot better on the, on the gems than yesterday. Yeah, Sarah and I are going to a brewery on Saturday, so I'm probably not going to be streaming that day. Unless I stream, like, super fucking early in the morning, which I probably won't. Oh, tomorrow's Saturday, right? Yeah, so tomorrow I'll be maybe taking a little break day. Also, tomorrow's going to be the... Um, the tier 3 game night, so I might as well just focus my energy on that. But we'll see if I- oh, I gotta play this safe. Oh, no, I missed that, idiot. Super dead run now. Metalhead, he seems cool. Bro, he's a giant fucking robot. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> he has no emotions. How can one have a connection with a robot? Actually, don't answer that. Oh my god damn it. Oh, Bungus, thank you for the Prime. 17 months, legend. Yeah, I'd have a beer with the rat, that'd be funny. The rat just getting drunk as hell. No, <laughs> come on, dude. Not what I wanted to see. This is gonna be pretty painful. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I am over. I'm going to just play it thorough here. Oh, actually, I'll grab this. He almost got me. You got to remember to hit that second to last guy when you go for that backup. All right, already burning a few gems, but I'm just going to YOLO it. I don't even care. Okay. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna no reset this, but I have- I think I have enough energy in me for like, another couple of reset attempts before I'm like kinda done today. Cause I'm just- I don't know, I'm just- I'm- I'm sussing it out and I just don't know. Like my gem counts have been good, my paces have been okay. It's just- I don't know. I'm just not like- I'm weirdly just not feeling the grind TM today. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm just like subconsciously burning out after playing every day for a while. In that case, it's better not to think about it and just play. It's nothing that deep. But yeah, we'll definitely try a few more runs after this. I have already been live for three hours, surprisingly. Oh my god. This is gonna be bad. 
Okay. I think I need that. <laughs> the last fucking guy taking my sparks. Okay, remember to grab the sparks outside of uh, the fucking thing. Penji's over here like, no, the hype train died at 94%. Bitch, you could have done something about that, you know? <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's all good if you don't, but I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> it's like fucking Penji's just like, oh no, the hype train died at 90%. Gosh. It's like I could have done something about that. <laughs> like, goddamn. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> it's all good. God damn it, the fucking blue. I'm not losing sleep over a damn hype train, that's for sure. I don't even get out of bed for a hype train. Do I find grinds easier, running slightly easier splits? Um, yeah, sometimes. In my 120% grind, it was definitely like that. Uh, lately, I've been enjoying um, running against my PB splits, especially in this category, because uh, if I get a good mama proxy, I'll be ahead. And if I play bad, I'll be behind, you know? So it's... I just like when splits are like, when you play good, you're ahead. And when you play bad, you're behind. And not necessarily like your best ever, like, good. But like, just just decent, you know, like I would say like if you play above average, your splits should be green. And if you play below average, your splits should be blue. Like those are the kind of splits I run against. And that's usually like, sometimes that reflects PB, sometimes it doesn't. So yeah. But yeah, it definitely does help on a subconscious level to run against slightly easier splits than PB. I would say there is definitely a diminishing return with it because like if you're running on super like easy splits then it's like you don't really get any value from them at all. They just feel like pointless. It's like the green stops being meaningful at that point. So you have to find where that point is for yourself. If the hype train had a cute skirt, I would definitely date it. I would kiss it. Remember my first time doing the big treetop run and glide? Uh, no, I'm not really... I don't know exactly what run and glide you're referring to. Because there is a lot of running and gliding in that level, as you can imagine. Have a good night, King of Funk. Thanks for hanging. And thank you for the good luck, Sven. Good to see you. Here. I'm just missing a couple blues, which I should be okay given my gem count. We'll see.
Nice little time saver there. Let's see what we got. Five zero nine five. Don't we want five one zero five at least? So we are a bit under gem. I'm gonna have to grab a few extras somewhere. Definitely need the extra five here. Ooh, okay, barely getting that. I'm also gonna grab the extra fan chests here. Okay, now we're good. Come on. Your friend is home alone and making biscuits. Nice, that sounds good. Nothing like some Pillsbury, you know, pre-canned, you know, cinnamon roll, bake in the oven cinnamon rolls. Just rip open the little cardboard thing and slap them on a pan and call it a day. Oh, that was a good attempt. Oh, I missed the 10. I need that. I was almost slick about it. What's up, Hapis? Thank you for the good luck. Yeah, the frosting. Dude, Sarah likes the orange-flavored frosting, which I just can't get down with. Do you guys like citrus flavored like frosting? Like on cakes and cupcakes, like orange orangey. I just can't I don't know, I can't dig the fake orange flavor. Yeah, it feels wrong to me. Or even if you like, you know, have real orange, you know, the infusion in there. It's just I don't know. Orange plus like extra sweet. Like cause in my mind oranges are already sweet, you know, so it just kinda creates this like sickly sweet thing. I like oranges for their, like, refreshing quality, you know? Not necessarily for, like, the uber-sweet, you know, richness type thing. Lemon fro- dude, lemon frosting's another one. That's a little less egregious for me, but I still struggle to appreciate lemon-flavored, like, frosting. Like, really sweet lemon stuff. Oh, and don't even get me started on, like, the key lime flavor. Oh, I hate key lime-flavored stuff. I'm sure actual key lime pie is great, but... Like, key lime flavoring, like, in anything is just, like, so gross to me. And I- this is coming from someone that loves limes, by the way. I fucking will just eat limes just straight up. Key lime like flavoring just feels so like weird and fake to me. Yeah, lemon, dude. I can I can appreciate a lemon cake. It's not like I said. It's not that bad for me compared to other citrusy things, citrusy infused sweets. Barely made that. I'm just gonna grab these because I need them anyways. Or I need one of them. Save myself the trouble in the home world. Dude, yeah, just cut out just cut a lime in half and just fucking bite down on that shit. Let all the juices, all the tannins from the fucking outer part, like just, just fuck me up, daddy. Like, God. If I ever make a, like, a mixed drink that requires lime juice, I will squeeze, like, multiple limes until I have, like, a very significant amount of lime juice and, like, the fucking, you know, whatever it is. Gin tonic plus lime. To get, you know, margaritas on the rocks. I'll just pure lime and tequila. That shit's good, man. Yeah, as far as, like, cake and so stuff, I like lemon cake. Like, I'm just not a big cake guy in general, like... I really don't have the biggest sweet tooth in the world. I can appreciate like a piece of chocolate, like with my beer, for example, to, you know, I, I like to bounce off like the bitter and the sweet, but if it's just all sweet in front of me, it's just like, I'm not a big fan of that. Good attempt. It was a tough rat to be fair. That, that might've been an appropriate rat to do like the reverse on that Ash was talking about.
Almost. I, I almost adjusted it enough. It needed that all that adjustment that I did, and it was just barely not enough. There we go. Half a line left in a lukewarm water bottle was a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you let it just sit... Yeah, that's gross, dude. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't just let a lime sit like that in a fucking... Already opened and stuff. That's just nasty. In Poland, people, people drink beer with honey? Well, I mean, you could... One of the easiest ways to, to make an alcoholic beverage is to, uh... Is to just ferment... I, I don't know exactly how to make it, but from what I understand, <laughs> the easiest way to do it is to use honey, like mead. So yeah, of course people drink uh, beer beverages with honey. People, that's like one of the oldest forms of beer is mead. Like any form of beer with honey, I think counts as mead, does it not? I don't know, I'm not like an expert on it, obviously. Yeah, that's like a thing all over the world, beer with honey. Oh my god. Yeah, we're good. I've never been a big mead guy. I do like honey, but um I don't know. Like beer is not supposed to be sweet to me. Like unless I'm drinking like a sour, like a really highly fermented like something like lambic or whatever, like or a ghost. And even then I can't drink like a lot of that. Well, I had like a traumatic experience because I for a while I was like super into sours back when I was in California You guys might remember like during my Morrowind hours and stuff that I'd always have a sour right there with my IPA and One night I went to karaoke and they had all they had like a huge fucking selection of beers and and one dollar PBRs as well so I remember I would be drinking like a one dollar beer and then I'd order a sour. They give you it in the nice, like, you know, kind of wine glass type of thing. And then I'd drink the sour, and then I'd drink an IPA, and then i repeat that process. I would have a $1 beer, and then a sour, and then an IPA. And I must have done that, like, three times. Spent, like, 60 or... I remember the bill was, like, 70 bucks <laughs> on my tab. And I was, like... By, by the time I went home, I was... I don't remember anything about that night or getting home. All I remember is I got home... And I just, I would, I laid down in my bed and the world was just spinning, dude. Like, it was just the most uncomfortably dizzy. And of course I threw, oh, and I threw up in my sink like a fucking dumbass. I had to clean that up in the morning. Like, dude, the toilet's right there. Like, that, I learned that lesson the hard way. So yeah, ever since then, I've always sort of associated the taste of, um, of sour beer with overdoing it and vomiting and t and that taste of the sour fermented beer in I'm sorry if this is like TMI but like that taste with vomit you know I definitely I'm sure some of you guys might have an experience like that with like throwing something up and now you have that food and it reminds you of the time you threw up and so you kind of get that you get that weird like reflex with it I'm sure some I'm sure you guys have that for whatever you know food like hot dogs or whatever maybe Definitely Laura doesn't have that for hot dogs. She's a hot, she's a, she's a doggy queen. She's a doggy. Yeah, Pisco, uh, Piscolas are like that for my sister. Water with oat meat? You mean like oatmeal? I heard it called oat meat. <laughs> I think you meant to say oatmeal. He's a glizzy dog. Cheap flavored spurn off. Yeah, it's always like some cheap alcohol, right? That takes you back to an experience where you vomited and it's like now anytime you're even like around or you smell it, it just reminds you of vomit, literally. Like I know a lot of people are like that with uh tequila. Oh man, do I want to do another? I'm like kind of lazy, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Do, who wants to see another run? I do have more runs in me. I should just. I need a man up and just get into it before I, before I cut myself too much slack here. This is my last day of grinding before a break, so let's just fucking send it. Do a little rap for the road. Perfect. Oh, let me try one more. I'll do another run. Don't worry. Let me just hit this rat once or twice more.
Don't press right too quickly. Dude, I am like doing these really terribly right now. You have the runs? Oof. You're not funny, bro. Alright, let's see here. Fuck. What am I going to do on break? I'm going to a brewery with Sarah tomorrow, and then I'm going to be hosting the Tier 3 game night in my private Discord channel. Jesus. Yo, Shinobi, thank you for the two dollars. Yeah, I'll do one more. I, like, as you guys know, the rat is important, so I just want to give it some love before my next run. Promise I will. Getting out all the bad attempts now. Oh, these are all, like, bad execution. Come on, just give me a fucking, some reassurance here. When he's that close, you have to set up more in the middle of him. Oh, when it happens like that, that is just explicitly a user error for me every time. So, so annoying. Yeah, I'm sorry to get you guys excited for a new run right away. I just, I need to look at this because I'm just struggling right now. I'll do this. I have to know. That was like a, <laughs> there was no way in hell that was working. Dude. Okay, I'll do the reverse one like Ash. <laughs> that was like, not a bad attempt. Now he's super far away. Okay, that was good execution, just unlucky proxy. Now I'm starting to get into a more confident place here. That was bad execution. Confidence drained. Oh, man. This is tiring. I should just do another run. I mean, instead of, like, getting too up in arms about this. Yeah, correct, Bic. Correct. Yeah, now it's just a question of just getting lucky with the proxy. These attempts are okay, even though they're failures, they're okay. That was bad. I'm doing another run. I'm I'm done racking my brain about this. If it works, it works, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm not I'm not having the best rat day today, so it just is what it is. I'm not no use no use forcing it. I can't wait to have some of that leftover um, Indian curry that Sarah brought home. It sounds really yummy. Thanks for the good lucks, guys. Yes, it could be the best run ever that dies on the rat. Totally. I would be proud of myself if that happened, actually. It's usually a big goal of the any percent grind. It's not just to get good end times, but to get good runs going into Nasty's world. Those are like two separate goals.
Wow, that was bad. Wasted the time and got none of the gems. Been there, done that, Bizkit. I don't feel like, um, clickbaiting that type of stuff anymore. Maybe on my extras channel if I feel like it, but since I stream on YouTube, it's really changed my whole perspective on what exporting a run to YouTube even really, like, the whole motivation of it. Do you know what I mean? I know, by the way, I know you're just joking, but I just wanted to, like, share, share that, you know, perspective. I know you probably don't care about my, like, content approach, <laughs> but, you know, I'm just riffing. Like, back in the day, I used to put out a ton of videos like that that are like, this run could have been the one, you know? But, like, my runs weren't being streamed to YouTube back then, so it was like, I had more of an incentive to just post, like, random, like, I don't want to say clickbaity, but uh, for lack of a better word, clickbaity, like, just full runs to my channel. Now I don't- now since you can just watch the VODs, there's no need to do that. And furthermore, I think, um, on my main channel, I think the sort of content catalog for actual videos does not reflect full game runs anymore. It's more like actual, like, edited challenges or- or just like challenge runs and things like that. So, even when I do want to post a full run separately, I'll just do it on my Clips channel. So that's very different than how I used to treat my YouTube channel. I, but I think this is like a step in the right direction for me. It's just, uh, it's just different. It's just funny that you like mentioned that like title. I was on world record pace. Then this happened, you know, it's like, I've, I've made so many videos with like a title just like that. You know, if you look back at my channel from like 2021 or 2022, you know, Spyro 3 win? Not soon, Karnos. Not soon. That's all I can say. the worst video idea I've ever heard. Thanks for watching. I posted a partial playthrough of Scar Skylanders, I think, on one of my YouTube channels. You know. Naturally, nobody gave a fuck. Not even me. I don't even give a fuck about that video. <laughs> like, who cares? Who cares about the fucking Skylanders, dude? Not me. There's probably one guy in the comments right now that's like, Dude, what the fuck? I love Skylanders. <laughs> it's always that one guy. That's not going to work. That 
also won't work. Let's just practice this. Run's dead. You respect Toys for Bob for Reignited? I mean, I'm, I'm glad Reignited exists. Is this going to turn into like a whole like modern Spyro discussion now? Is that what, is that what this stream is turning into? <clears throat> yeah. Reignited is fine. It's definitely rough around the edges, but it's fine. That is my opinion. What's yours? Let's do some more runs. Hey, have a good night, SBR. You're at 7.6 thousand resets for a for a shiny. That's pretty cool, Ice Thunder. Three, two, one, go. First Skylanders is 2011. Okay, rolling. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Bizkamus. I think we'll get like some fucking. Some jabroni making a fucking retrospective on Skylanders in the next few years here. That would not surprise me. Or just on like modern Spyro, you know, like... If this game had an anti-piracy, who would tell you you're playing a hacked version of the game? I don't know, maybe Nestor? Nestor would be like, fuck you, bitch, and then just fucking pull out a machine gun and just shoot Spyro in the face, probably. What's up, Ken? The grind today is real. I mean, yeah, it, I am grinding. I am playing this game and fucking sending it. As, I mean, I, there's, not, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing, I, I think sending it might be a strong way to put it, but like, I'm here playing, you know, I'm, I'm putting in my hours and I'm doing my thing in this game and I, I'm not upset about it. I'm not like struggling or anything. I'm just, I'm just here existing and doing the thing, you know, and that's, I'm proud of myself for that. Even if I don't get any good runs today. So yes, the grind is real. Or whatever. Practicing runs in Reignited makes runs in OG much more enjoyable. <laughs> Interesting. I've never heard that perspective, but hey. I'm sure some some of these Reignited players would, uh, would agree with that. Oh. Nestor is the same voice actor as Reinhardt from Overwatch. Cool. In Reignited, not in the original. Okay. Alrighty, let's see if we get some good pacing happening here. Come on, just... I don't know what the fuck I was doing there. Oh. 
Fortier, thank you for the uh, prime, man. 19 months. Love you, dog. Yo, Jamla, thanks for the good luck. Cute penguin. Have a good night, Zachu True. And thanks for the good luck. up Invect. Thank you, thank you. What if in Reignited, if you try skipping Nestor, he says, shut the fuck up. This is important. Yeah. Alright. Let's roll here. Yeah, happy Spyro's in the chat. We got this. See if Mama wants to play games with my heart tonight. How the fuck that worked? I don't know how I got away with that. That should not have worked. Alright. Living on a prayer over here. Uh, you took my advice about any person out of 52. Nice, congrats. I don't remember what my advice was, but I'm glad it helped you. Cheers, Invect. And I'll take advantage of this moment to just plug a little bit. Like, if you, if you or anybody else wants advice in this game, I do offer um, hour and a half long uh, lessons over Discord for forty dollars. I'll screen share, watch your gameplay. We can talk about mentality. You know how the runs are going, what your next steps are. You know, sometimes it's not always super clear. So if you want to just talk and riff with me about Spyro or show me or compare strats or figure out what to do next. I'm here for you. Oops. I'm gonna brighten up my camera again here. That's yeah, a little too bright. Is this, is this too bright? I might turn it back down. I don't like this level of brightness. That was too yellow. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Nice and dark mode. Dark mode vibes. <laughs> Your public awaits. Good luck. Hey, cheers, Bex. Love you.
Yeah, that seven second time save is so huge in Clifftown. Oh, I should not have hit that. Missing some gems for it, but saving a little time, I suppose. Yeah, you absolutely can, Flawless. Like, you absolutely can just <laughs> schedule a lesson with me and just and just talk to me. Like, we don't have to necessarily focus on the game. Like, if you just want to be in a Discord call with me for an hour and a half and just talk about random shit, like, I'm, I'm here for that. I think a lot of speedrunning, like, genuinely, I think, um... Like, it's helpful to just exchange, like... You know, just perspectives and worldviews and stuff about, like, life in general. Because I think all of that stuff affects... Affects, like, the speedrun grind, you know? So if you just want to talk to me for an hour and a half, I mean, hey, I don't, I don't judge it. Like... Especially as it pertains to, like, things like mentality and, like, how your life is going and how that might affect your speedrunning journey. Like, I'm, I'm all about having a long hour-plus discussion about that. Yeah, I'm not a therapist, though, all right? And, like, try, like, obviously, if you do hit me up, like, try to keep it somewhat, you know, relevant to speedrunning. But if it's, you know, hey... I have an open mind and heart, you know, in that sense. And I'm not prejudiced. How long did it take to be able to speedrun and read, talk to chat at the same time without getting distracted? Um, I don't know, it's just something I've always been doing for my entire speedrun speed journey. I've always streamed and grinded runs. Um, I'm very used to this game, I have a lot of muscle memory, and there's the perfect amount of um, breaks, you know, in between levels and during dragons for me to talk, so... It's not as hard as you might think. But, I mean, I guess it does take some getting used to, some practice, and some days I'm better at it than others. Oops. Four twenty just began. Hey, cheers, all the stoners in the chat. Are there any other time save spots in these splits? Um, sort of. The biggest one is Clifftown. I also have some time save in Jock, depending on my gem count. But nothing as massive as that Clifftown time save. So I just gotta keep it solid, really. I can save a little bit of time in Bog, perhaps. Like, it, like really, once I start getting into Beastmakers, it starts to become gem count dependent on whether I can save time or not. But remember, regardless of all that, like, I can save time in any split if I just play good. Like, don't forget that. That is always- that is always going to be true. Can I give you advice about speedrunning Halo? I do watch a lot of Halo speedruns, but I get the feeling that you're not really serious with that question, so I'm not gonna entertain it too much. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert on anything except this game, alright? Like, so just full- full disclosure. But yeah, to anyone who is uh, curious about doing lessons, just send me a DM on uh, Discord. I'm all ears, and at this point I'm done talking about it. Thanks. Desperation Jock, yeah, that's kind of what my PB's Jock was. It was a little desperate, I would say. <laughs> so, there's definitely time to be saved there, with a good Jock. And to switch to mobile. Yeah, it do be like that, especially with the YouTube chat. Sometimes it like it comes in like you'll notice when you see it like pop on screen. It kind of takes a bit longer than the Twitch chat. So just the YouTube AP API. It's I mean, I can't lower the delay anymore. But that's how it goes. All good. At least I can still talk to you guys and interact on a sem you know, somewhat in real time. Doesn't got to be perfect, you know.
YouTube streams stream kind of work so it automatically delays. Hang on, right? good level there the only thing that was bad was the uh the platform cycle but nothing i can do about that to not go for you mean at the start of that supercharge yes correct the one on the right only has a red gem and it increases my likelihood of failing the supercharge because the green druid lifts the thing in front of me i need to focus i hope that explains it it seems i'm on a different level than ash and laura i mean sure like i, I don't I think the the proof is in the pudding, and as far as that's concerned, Ash has had by far the best results out of all of us. So I don't think it's really fair for, to say that I'm on like a different level than them or whatever. When the proof, when I haven't proven that to be the case in, in my Dreamweaver split, splits. Like once I start getting like 35 3x Dreamweavers, then, then I think you can say like, all right, I'm on Ash's level now. But until then, if, if you really are going to compare us, which I try not to, obviously, for my own mental health. But if you are going to compare us, I think you got to, like, be real about the Dreamweavers consistency. The, the consistency of the run out of Dreamweavers. It's one thing to have level, individual levels go well. It's another thing to, like, get a good pace. That's my take on that. And in that sense, I am definitely not on Ash's level. But I'm getting there slowly. I mean, with time, you know, with time, I'm getting there. I'm definitely making progress. And in that sense, you know, I appreciate the compliment, Mac. Some runs like this one, I just heat up, you know, like I'm just I'm just gaming right now. So there you go. Feels good.
<laughs> you have a bottle of Crowley you haven't drank since your early 20s, man. Blast from the past. If I had to choose my respective specialties between me and- Dude, I, I really cannot answer that question right now. That's just like way too- that's too deep of an answer for me to really- I need to focus. That's a, it is an interesting question. I don't know. What do you guys think each of us are most strong at? I did not watch the Joker movie. Isn't that the one where he's like dancing on the stairs and shit? And like shoots David Letterman or whatever? Yeah, Ash got a new record uh, last night slash today. I don't remember the exact time, but yeah, Ash just got a 37-17. Alright, good pace, everybody. We're gaming. And I think I'm doing good on gems as well. I did miss a couple, but nothing like too major. I didn't miss any yellows or anything, so... Not too many blues. Good gem count. Gem count's been looking real nice today. Not missing that box this time. <laughs> I missed that box on like my first good run today. Costly miss indeed. I'm on the PlayStation High Straw Booby. Unfortunate, but luckily there's a Sparks right here at the start. Just means I can't make any mistakes here, which is not great, <laughs> but I mean, see what happens. Fuck me, he's been fucking me all day today.
Ooh, not really bad. Oh no. Oh no. This might be run dead. We'll see. We'll see if I got the clutch or not. That was so unlucky too. I had that flame charge. Just weird positioning. losing time now. But the question is, can we get through Guantan? That's really going to determine whether this run lives or dies. Pray for me. No. 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 This is so fucked, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hesitating at all on that entrance is like you're basically fucked, essentially. Because the frogs have more time to move. They start moving once you go up these stairs, so... Like... They're just waiting for you at that point. So yeah, PB basically dead now. World record dead. Because... The, and the whole reason why is because I got hit by two pigs. Basically, kind of just unlucky pig hits. Basically ending this uh, world record pace. What do you guys think about that? You guys proud of me? I'm gonna try to finish this run. We'll see what happens. Death abuse before Guantan? In retrospect, that would have been faster, but in reality, I played a gamble there. You know, I could have tanked a six second time save, but instead I risked not losing as much time by doing it without sparks, which I felt was warranted on this pace. been proud. I know, I just can't impress you, Karnas. Oh well. Oh well. Still gonna try to finish this run with some dignity. It's named Guantan after Guantanamo Bay which, as you may or may not know, is an island in Cuba that has political prisoners in it. So it's as if to say that all the enemies in Guantan are like, like, political, you know, whatever. It's not, it's not really that deep. And frankly, it is a little offensive because Guantan is like, the real Guantanamo Bay is like, you know, it's a controversial place. It's not necessarily that, like, the worst, you know, people in the world are there or anything. But we just call it Guantan. That's what it is. Save some time there. That was cool. Yeah, you can hit both fan chests with the supercharge, which I rarely do. That was like a rare occurrence for me. Nice, barely getting those. Huge proxy. That out of bounds actually does not involve a proxy. But thank you. Semantics, you know, doesn't matter. I appreciate it anyway, so appreciate the hype. It's the important part. Yeah, 
there you go. Oh no. Dude. Come on. This is just sloppy. Sparks was just not feeling those, ooh, feeling those golds. Let's see what the damage is coming out of here. I, f I feel like I'm still good on gems. That's what I feel like in my soul. But we'll see what the see what the count says. What's up, Alakazen? I'm glad you like the purple lights. Thank you, Riki. I did not look at my gem count. We'll see. I'm just gonna not uh, alter any of my movement. Play shit normal. How much does Rat Proxy save? Compared to going... So Rat Proxy skips Nork Cove and Twilight Harbor. So doing both of those levels back to back would take about like a minute and a half roughly compared to skipping them with Rat Proxy. Gem count was 5099. Okay, that's low. That was also low. <laughs> I should have grabbed a few extras in the home world, but what are you gonna do? No use crying over spilt milk. Odds of getting both desperation jock and I'm not really sure what you mean by desperation jock. I, is that like an actual strat that I'm not aware of? Someone else said de Desperation Jock earlier. I thought they were just referring to the fact that I was under gem in Jock. So my, you know, recoveries were desperate. <laughs> but uh, maybe you're referring to like an actual strat name that I'm not aware of. Oh no. The glitch that causes Jock's gems to fall into the lava and auto-collect. I, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not, like, super familiar with that glitch. I know you can get, like, an early kill on Jock. I didn't know that doing a standard kill on Jock... I think I know what you're talking about, if they can, like, go down to that area. I... That's, like, such a rare thing that, like, just in normal gameplay for me that I really don't even see that as, like, a strategy or as a potential route for time save. But maybe there's some detail about it that I'm missing. I'm clearly not an expert on it, you know, as you can tell, so... You may want to have that question for someone else. Who do you think built the Ganon Dream League? It's probably your mother. I think they're talking about how, like, you know when you do the quick kill on Jock, that, like, the gems, like, go towards the lava? Sometimes, very rarely, that can happen on just the normal kill as well, where the gems, like, go straight towards... kind of towards the lava, but not exactly. <laughs> I, th I think I've seen clips in the Spyro Discord over the years of of that happening. But, uh, yeah, that's not like a strat or anything that anyone knows how to do, as far as I understand. Unless you're just referring to the quick kill in Jock, which is not optimal, because it wastes too many gems. He's got the gems in Laka. Can I don't know what Laka is. Can you like clarify that for me? I 
A lack of bitches. Got the gems in lava consistent the ge Yeah, I mean I wanna reiterate that I feel like you guys understand whatever this fucking trick is on a deeper level than I do, so I really don't have anything to add to it. Will I or have I done a video on my PC setup? And how and how to play retro stuff. I have a command in my chat. If you type exclamation point setup, that explains exactly how my PlayStation Two, at least, is plugged in. So you can uh, take a look at that. Um, but no, I don't have a video going through and saying all of my PC specs. They're not really super relevant for capturing game footage, anyways. Nice first try. If only it had been a better run. <laughs> the classic. The classic around plus twenty. You know, and then get in the, hey, but you know what? I'm not going to be salty about it. This is my 37 today. I did get a 37 today. I just um, basically bog killed this. This was going to world record until um, the 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 um, the pigs and Misty Bog didn't want to cooperate, basically. I, I even had a death in Guantan. So considering that it was such a bad bog, um, I'm pretty happy to still be walking away with like a 37. Also, I kind of phoned it in in that jock as well. I really could have been more focused in the end game. And this is probably a big reason why I'm not like putting down 35s on like on worse runs, you know, like I really could practice my I think my mental like strength, especially going into the end game. Like once I know a run is bad, I kind of stop looking at the gem counts and stuff. It's just kind of a subconscious thing for me. And I start talking to you guys more possibly as a coping mechanism. And that's something I need to get over. I need to try to take runs like this seriously. And I think that's where I lost like another 10, 15, whatever seconds. But uh, yeah, most of mo the, the start of this run's downfall was in, of course, in bog. But with that said, I'm still proud of myself or something. I feel pretty empty, to be honest with you guys. That's kind of what speedrunning does to a man <laughs> after four hours. <laughs> I do feel empty and whatever, but GG's, you know, I'm not going to complain Sorry, too hard. So kind of uh, I hope, well, all I can say is I hope that you guys enjoyed the stream. Um, I, I don't know if I should try another. I'm kind of hungry right now at this point. I think I sort of put all my chips into that last run right there. So I feel like going anymore is going to just be a bad idea for my sanity so i think i'm just gonna raid someone at this point um but yeah good runs you know just another day another missed world record and it's you know what else is new <laughs> but uh yeah it's, uh, it's definitely it definitely is uh wearing i mean it's it, maybe just because i've been playing for like four and a half hours but like i've been having so many days like this lately and it's hard to like it's just hard to take the W, I feel like, because it's, um, you know, I am so close to a breakthrough. I'm so close to, to at least getting, like, near record. And I just, I seem to just choke it every time. And it's it's just like, man, like, before Rat, even. Like, like can I, if I'm going to choke it, can I at least just choke it on Rat? Like, no, I guess, it just, it just feels like very, like, it just feels like some choke artist type stuff with me. And it's just like, when are we going to get over these chokes, guys? Like, I, I, I'm not really sure. It's been weeks of this now at this point. So, you know, you got to stay strong. I mean, you can't really think about it too hard. You got to just fucking keep playing and and just eventually not choke. You know, that's kind of how it is. Um, I don't want to be too hungry for world record, as you say, Siphon. I don't want to be too desperate for it because that's also going to put me in a bad place mentally. There's, there's a lot of, um, you know, expectation managing I have to do here and, you know, with all this choking and stuff, I have to just, like, lower my expectations of myself and just be like, you know what, this is a good run, this is something to be proud of, um, but, you know, I do feel empty, I do feel like a bit of a failure, and that's part of this grind as well, so I'm not gonna, you know, take it too much to heart, but um, I really would like, you know, something better than this soon. On, on runs where I am playing this well, I would like to be able to at least get a 35 Dreamweavers. I feel like that's not a crazy expectation. But, um, you know, well, t time will tell is all I can say. And uh, once again, thank you everybody for watching. I'm going to find a raid target at this point, And I just hope you guys have a beautiful day. And I love you all. Raid Bex. <laughs> Look up Hemi Sync and Saliva Method. 
I'll get right on that donut. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I chose the wrong, uh, hold on. Wrong raid target. I think I caught that. Yeah, I thought it said salvia method. <laughs> yeah, smoke salvia. That should help. Yeah, thank you, Shinobi. And thank you for the $1, by the way. Thank you for all the hype. I really do feel like I, I put my heart into that run just now. And I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed it. That's all That's all I have to offer you guys, you know? <laughs> I, I have my, my, you know, heart and soul that I, you could say I put into these runs. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So on that note, um, I am probably going to be offline tomorrow um, because of reasons, but I hope to catch you guys the day after and uh, we'll see what happens. Guys, keep an eye on Saboom and Ash and and Bex who are raiding, you know, they're all doing big things. Spora, they're all doing big things. So remember, I'm not the only Spyro speedrunner out there. And on that note, I will catch you guys when I catch you. Have a great day, okay? Mwah.